all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of October 17th, 2019. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Will you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Quiet in the chamber. Good afternoon and welcome to City Hall today. We have perhaps the most important vote that the council will take today. We have had many months of hearings, deliberations, rallies, town hall, press conferences to get to this point today. We thank all of you for being here for taking time out of your schedule to be here for this very historical vote. Given the volatile climate that we are in this nation at this time, for safety reasons, we are asking that this entire meeting be respected and that we hear from each and every member. There are many opposing viewpoints, and each member of the city council has a different viewpoint that we need to hear today. And we would like for all of you to be able to hear the positions and the debates that are going to happen on the floor today. Because it is critical for each of you to be able to go back to your prospective communities to report what happened today. But again, as I stated, for safety reasons, particularly given the way the balcony is constructed, we have to make sure that we respect one another, that we hear one another, and that deliberations take place in a respectful manner. We don't all have to agree, but we all have to respect each other's important viewpoints that are going to be expressed today. Unfortunately, the first outburst the first disruption is going to cause the entire balcony and this chamber to be cleared, which will unfortunately not allow everyone to hear the deliberations that are very critical to the future of New York City. We ask for your respect. We ask for the ability to have mutual understandings of respect with one another. So I thank you again for being here today as I stated at the last stated meeting, my predecessor, the late James E. Davis, was shot and killed right here in this particular room. And so because of that, we are asking that we move in a respectful manner. Because for each of the members here today, they all want to go back home to their families. So we want to make sure that we have a safe, productive, and respectful meeting. Thank you. We are now going to begin with roll call. Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Present. Borelli. Brannon. Here. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Cornegy. Present. Deutsch. Here. Diaz. Aki. Drum. Espinal. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Here. Jonai. Present. Grudenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Lewis. Here. Mizell. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Present. Perkins. Present. Powers. Present. Reynoso. 
Present. Richards. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Present. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Ballone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. Thank you. We have a quorum. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by the very Reverend Antonio Checo, Rector of St. Mark's Episcopal Church, located at 3350 82nd Street in Jackson Heights, Queens. Please rise. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Last year, the media paid lots of attention to the migrant coming from, from the Middle East, the Lebanon, Syria, into Europe, through Greece and Italy. They created an honesty. And for some reason, a ship full of migrants came one day later, and they were told that they were late, therefore they will not qualify for the amnesty. Some of them said, have mercy on us. We have no food, no jobs. We are hungry. We dine. In last Sunday gospel, Jesus, on the way to Jerusalem for crucifixion, Ten lepers approach him, also asking for mercy. Jesus sent them to the authority, and they got healed on the way. The authority, who were supposed to, go the, to be the priest, in this case, you are the authority. The same way today, the people from Bushwick, from East New York, South Bronx, the LGBT community, the prisoners, they are also, actually, I, I had to mention, the family of the policemen who were killed and, was, and, and the homeless who were killed. And the family of all of those people that have been killed in our country, they are asking for mercy. You are here today to make decision. And for what I see, I think it's going to be exciting. So therefore, I want to ask God to send his spirit on all of you to give you the wisdom, the stamina, the desire to keep in your hearts those people that are appointed to you, our city, the state, our country, the leaders of our country. So that you are able to discern and to make the right decision for us. But especially, I want to ask God to send his Holy Spirit on all of you, to give you peace, and to fill your heart and mind with compassion for those out there who are in need of your decision to be the best for all of them. And that I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Chekel, for that very timely prayer. 
I'd now like to ask Councilmember Danny Drum to spread the invocation on record. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Reverend Antonio Chaco, born and raised in Santiago, Dominican Republic, migrated to the United States in 1982 to complete a master's in social work. He obtained his bachelor's degree in social work from a Catholic university in the Dominican Republic and completed a master's degree in clinical social work at Fordham University. He also obtained a master's in theology from the General Theological Seminary in New York City. He was ordained in 2007 and became a priest in 2008 in the Diocese of Long Island. Father Chaco was the director of a UNICEF program in La Vega and in the Dominican Republic, program director of the HIV program at St. Joseph's Children's Services in Brooklyn, director of foster care and preventative services at Harlem Dowling Children's Services. He was an assistant to the deputy executive at Red Cross uh, and uh, uh, post September 11th, post the September 11th terrorist attacks, and a medical, a mental health clinician at Mount Sinai Hospital. Currently, he is the rector of St. Mark's Episcopal Church in Jackson Heights. I thank him for coming today, and I ask that you spread the invocation in full upon the record. Thank you, Councilmember Drum, and again, thank you so much, Reverend Chekel, for being here today. We will now have the adoption of minutes by Councilmember Menchaca. I move motion to adopt the minutes. Thank you. We will now go to messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. M, excuse me, M191 Finance Authority Act. I received, ordered, printed, and filed. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call ups. M192. Uh, thank you. At this time, I'm asking for a roll call vote on today's land use call ups. Adams. Aye. Ampri Samuel. Aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. I don't think she heard you. Uh, I did. I'm trying oh, to make sure of what it is that we're voting on. Just the call ups. Land use call ups. Aye. Borelli. Brannon. Aye. Cabrera. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Constantinidis. Aye. Cornegie. Aye. Deutsch. Diaz. No. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. I would aye. Gibson. Aye. Jonai. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye. Kalos. With permission, I'd like to vote on all land use call-ups coupled on items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. Permission granted. I vote aye on all. King. Um, with permission, I would like to vote on all land use call-ups and everything on the general order calendar today. Permission granted. I vote aye on all call-ups, but I do vote no on the uh, application of the closing of Rikers Island and Broad Base Jails. Thank you. Thank you. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lansman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Mizell. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Hi. Moya. Aye. Perkins. I uh, on uh, borough based jails, including land use call ups. I on land use call, all land use call ups. Thank you. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Yeah. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. It's fine. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye.
Thank you. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 46 affirmative and one negative. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, and I want to thank you all for being here today for this very important stated meeting. I want to begin by acknowledging that this morning our country faced a great loss. Uh, Congress Member Elijah Cummings, who has been a giant in the fight for civil rights and justice, died. His leadership has been a blessing his entire time in public service, and he will be missed. As we do every stated meeting, I want to recognize some of the important events that have happened recently. Sadly, we have lost two NYPD officers since our last stated meeting. Officer Brian Mulkeen died in the line of duty on September 29th. We will be forever grateful for his service. He was 33 years old. Unfortunately, another member of the department has died by suicide. NYPD Sergeant Lin Hong Lee died at his home in Queens. He was also 33 years old. Sergeant Lee's death marks the 10th suicide by a member of the NYPD so far this year. My condolences are with their families and the men and women of the department. If we could please rise for a moment of silence. Thank you. This month is also Domestic Violence Awareness Month. It is an important time to remind those who are suffering from domestic abuse that they are not alone. The city provides support, which can be found at www.nyc.gov forward slash NYC hope. I also want to acknowledge that this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month when people are urged to get screened for breast cancer. And as you can see by many of the members of the council here today, we are wearing a rainbow ribbon in honor of National Coming Out Day and also Spirit Day, which was last week. Everyone deserves to be accepted for who they are and who they love. This week, we also celebrate the Jewish holiday of Sukkot. If you have not seen it already, there is a sukkah outside of City Hall on Broadway. This is City Hall's first sukkah, and I want to thank Councilmember Chaim Deutsch and the Jewish Caucus uh, for their leadership. I urge everyone uh, to... Uh, stop in and take a break from the hustle and bustle of our city. Now, if we are going to dive into our legislative agenda for today, it is certainly an important one. I'll start with some land use items. We'll be voting on five historic districts, four located in Sunset Park, in Councilmember Carlos Menchaca's district, and the fifth is Doctors Row, located in Councilmember Justin Brandon's district. In addition to these historic districts, we'll vote on 76-780 Myrtle Avenue, which will facilitate the development of 59 units of supportive and affordable housing in Councilmember Robert Corngi's district, and we'll be voting on two applications in Councilmember Jimmy Van Bramer's district, Vernon Boulevard rezoning, which will facilitate three mixed-use buildings, and the 38th Street rezoning, which will facilitate a seven-story building. Both applications will be modified to include MIH option one only. And in Council Member Francisco Moya's district, we're going to vote on the Lefrak City parking garage to ensure the continued use of the garage. The Beach Channel Drive, Clintonville Street rezoning, and 71st Road rezoning would legalize existing uses in Council Member Eric Ulrich, Paul Vallone, and Karen Kozlowitz's respective districts and Terrence Cardinal Cook applications would facilitate the rehabilitation of Flower Hill Nursing Facility, the development of a 32-story residential building, a PACE Center for the Elderly, and a supportive housing building in Councilmember Diana Ayala's district. There are also two land use items relating to the Urban Development Action Area Project, UDAP, Blake Hendricks and Councilmember Inez Barron's district, and NME, 
3 West 140th and West 150th Street in Councilmember Bill Perkins' district. We'll also vote on the following Article 11 property tax exemptions out of the Finance Committee, Crown Plaza Apartments, and Majority Leader Lori Cumbo's district will receive a partial 40-year exemption to preserve 76 units of affordable rental housing and 2178 Atlantic Avenue in Councilmember Alika Amprey Samuels' district will receive a partial 40-year exemption to preserve 16 units of affordable rental housing. Moving on, the council will vote on the following pieces of legislation. First, the council's voting on a bill to prohibit vending on certain streets in Diker Heights, Brooklyn, during the holiday season. Introduction 1657A, sponsored by Councilmember Justin Brannon, would prohibit street vending on certain streets in Diker Heights during the popular Diker Light celebration. The ban would be effect from 2 p.m. to 6 a.m. each day from Thanksgiving until New Year's Day and will help alleviate congestion in this residential neighborhood over the holiday season, and I want to thank the staff, Balkis Mirig, for her help on that bill. Next, we're going to be voting on a comprehensive and sound package of legislation to not only close Rikers Island, but on key measures that expands the rights for those currently incarcerated and to ensure communities impacted by the closure have important resources. The first of our bills is sponsored by Councilmember Diane Ayala. Pre-considered introduction number 1742A would require increased reporting on the implementation of the borough-based jail plan. It would require the Mayor's Office of Criminal Justice to issue a progress report on closing jails on Rikers Island and any related efforts to both reduce the jail population in the city and open jail facilities outside of Rikers Island. Mock J would also be required to report on jail population trends, the timeline for the closure of Rikers Island, budget and procurement of contracts related to the closure, design and construction of jail facilities, and changes to inform technology infrastructure and staffing plans. The bill would also require an additional report from the Board of Correction on the impact of the construction of city jails on compliance with Board of Correction minimum standards and the impact of any significant changes to the design or construction of any new facilities on incarcerated individuals. The Board of Correction was all, would also be required to issue a report on conditions and facilities prior to the Department of Correction housing incarcerated individuals on conditions at such facilities. The board would also be required to give access to blueprints, uh, program plans, and other materials related to the design and construction of the facilities. And I want to thank Brian Crow and Alana Sivan from the staff for working on this bill. Next is introduction, pre-considered introduction number 1762, sponsored by Councilmember Keith Powers, which would require correctional facilities to be modernized and built in a way that is more livable for people in custody. The bill also allows incarcerated individuals to decorate a designated area of their living quarters and requires the Department of Correction staff to address people in custody by their names and preferred pronouns where practicable. And I want to thank Brian and Alana for working on that as well. Next is introduction 1590, sponsored by Councilmember Margaret Chin, which would require correctional health services, which operates all mental health care for those in custody, to communicate with defense attorneys about the status and progress of individuals with serious mental illness. It would also help their attorneys identify the right treatment and housing alternatives to jail and prison so that we can rehabilitate people rather than incarcerate them. And I want to thank the staff, Daniel Adis, for his work on that bill. We also uh, have some legislation sponsored by Councilmember Steve Levin, pre-considered introduction number 1759A, would establish a commission on community reinvestment to be chaired by the Department of Social Services. The commission would be required to issue a yearly set of recommendations on investments that address the root causes of mass incarceration. The first report would be due in January of 2021, and the last report would be issued in 2027. And I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Brian Crow, Alana Sivan, and Keyshorn Denny. Next is introduction 153B, and it would codify the three-quarter houses task force. Three-quarter houses are typically one- and two-family homes, larger apartment buildings, or other structures run by operators who rent beds to single adults. Many tenants are formerly incarcerated, and typically their only option would be living in a shelter or being homeless. 
This multi-agency task force in this bill would be, cha would be charged with identifying and inspecting these homes and when necessary, helping people relocate to other more appropriate housing options. And I want to thank the staff, Aminta Kilowan, for her work on that bill. And finally, two land use items that will change our city in monumental ways. We'll be voting on citing four borough-based jails in Councilmember Diana Ayala, Margaret Chin, Karen Kozlowitz, and Steve Levin's districts to facilitate the closure of the detention centers on Rikers Island, as well as the existing detention centers in Manhattan, Brooklyn, and the Bronx to build new, more humane facilities. In addition, there is a pre-considered resolution on the filing of a land use application regarding Rikers Island which authorizes the City Council to file a land use application amending the city map to establish a public place with a use restriction on Rikers Island. The restriction is that Rikers Island shall not be used for the incarceration of individuals after December 31st, 2026, and this will guarantee the closure of Rikers. I don't think I am overstating it when I say that for many of us, this is one of the most significant votes of our entire career. In addition to closing Rikers, this plan will also lead to the closure of the Manhattan, the current Manhattan Detention Complex, the Brooklyn House of Detention, and the Vernon C. Bain Correctional Center, which is also known as the Barge or the Boat. These facilities aren't as famous as Rikers Island, but they are equally horrific and inhumane. Rikers Island is a symbol of brutality and inhumanity, and it is time for us to once and for all close Rikers Island. What we are doing today will reshape this city for generations to come and will impact the lives of every New Yorker. For decades, our city was unfair to those who became involved in our justice system. And the overwhelming majority of New Yorkers who got caught up in our justice system were black and brown men. In too many cases, they were struggling with untreated mental illness or addiction or poverty, or some combination of the three of those things. And our city did not step up and offer them the appropriate resources and solutions. Only incarceration. We let those New Yorkers down. Quiet we cannot undo all of the mistakes of the past. But as a city, we must do everything we can to move away from the failed policies of mass incarceration. That is what we are doing today. We are on the cusp of a new, more humane era for our city. And it took a lot of work to help us get here. I want to commend and give tremendous accolades to my predecessor, Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito, for her vision and leadership and helping to bring us to this point. Where is she? Melissa, thank you. Thank you for your leadership, for everything you've done on this. And before I go any further, I want to thank four members whose leadership brought us to this point. Councilmember Diana Ayala, Councilmember Margaret Chin, Councilmember Karen Kozlowitz, and Councilmember Steve Levin. Balancing, yes, balancing the needs. Balancing the needs of your districts and the needs of our city was not an easy task, but you all did an extraordinary job. Your commitment to doing the right thing was inspiring and the epitome of public service. We have spent weeks and months and well over a year working together. You have fought hard. You have been thoughtful, compassionate, empathetic, and brought your own world life experiences to this point. I am proud of every single one of you for your tremendous courage, bravery, and leadership in the face of opposition. You all inspire me. We would not be here today without every single one of you. So I want to say thank you, Karen. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Margaret. And thank you, Diana, 
for everything you've done to get us to this point. You all have been heroes in this process, and I am proud of each one of you. What, what we are voting on today is a plan that is responsive to the concerns of communities where the facilities will be located. The plan is also responsive to the concerns of the communities and families that have been harmed, way too harmed, by the long-term impact of mass incarceration. It makes significant citywide investments in housing, mental health care, restorative justice, alternatives to incarceration, alternatives to detention, and violence prevention programs. We are not only closing inhumane, dilapidated jails, but we're investing $391 million in communities to help reform our system and address the root causes of mass incarceration. Nearly 70% of that, $265 million, of that $391 million number, $265 million is new spending that is attached to this plan we are voting on today. And that is on top of $40 million that this city council secured in the June adopted budget to help people who are justice involved. We are proud of these victories. These investments are the heart of this plan that we're talking about, because if you look at the closed Rikers t-shirts of the brave leaders that are in this room today, if you look at their t-shirts, it says, close Rikers, build communities. Close Rikers and build communities. This is not, this is not, and has never, ever, ever been just about building new jails. Of course we know that it is important to get the facilities right. I have been to Rikers. I was on Rikers last week with Councilmember Chin, uh, sorry, with Councilmember Ayala and Councilmember Levin and Councilmember uh, Drum. We walked around Rikers Island. Rikers Island is a stain on New York City. Rikers Island should have been closed decades ago. And many of the people on Rikers Island never should be there to begin with. I have talked to formerly incarcerated New Yorkers. Many of them are here today, sitting in the balcony. They have led this effort. They have led the coalition. They were part of the Lippman Commission. They have met with council members. They have told us their real life experiences. They've talked about the harm that has been caused to them and their families because of mass incarceration. They are the ones that joined with Speaker Mark Viverito to formulate the Lippman Commission plan and to work with us every step of the way. I am so proud of these activists and leaders that brought us to this point. We would not be here without each and every one of them. The current jail facilities, the Brooklyn House of Detention, the Barge, the Tombs, these are not facilities that can be fixed. These facilities are irredeemable. These facilities are dilapidated. It would be inhumane to close Rikers Island down and house people in those existing facilities. The Brooklyn House of Detention does not have air conditioning. It is like an oven in the summer. It is unacceptable. It matters if you have air conditioning in the summer and if you have heat in the winter. It matters if you have sunlight in a bathroom. It matters if you have services and programming to help you when you are incarcerated. This matters to not just, of, not just those who are incarcerated, but it matters to all of us in New York City that people are getting the care and help and rehabilitation that they need. People were and are tortured on Rikers Island. We visited solitary confinement last week. It was like a bad horror movie. It is sick and unacceptable. They come home to our communities damaged and angry and sicker 
than before they went in to a correctional facility. It is in our interest to have facilities with programming that prioritizes rehabilitation, that prioritizes restorative justice, that prioritizes mental health care, that prioritizes workforce training, that prioritizes these issues. And the current facilities do not allow this. The facilities are one part of this plan. The other part of the plan are the investments that I mentioned. You cannot have one without the other. You must close Rikers and build and invest in communities. We are investing, we are investing in stopping violence before it happens. We are investing in housing because it is difficult to stay sober or keep a job or stay on your medication if you don't have a roof over your head. We are investing in getting the right mental health treatment for people who should never be on Rikers Island to begin with. I am proud of this plan, and I am grateful for the hard work that went into it by the City Council staff and by the tireless advocates who have held our feet to the fire to make sure that we get this right. I want to thank the following organizations, the Gatal Center for Health, Equity and Justice, Just Leadership Quiet USA, the, the Fortune Society, Exodus Transitional Communities, the Vera Institute for Justice, the Women's Community Justice Foundation, the Columbia University Justice Lab, as well as an amazing man, an amazing man who has worked hard, tirelessly with Speaker Mark Viverito and with me over the last many years. I want to thank former Chief Judge Jonathan Lippman and everyone who worked on the Independent Commission for the New York City Criminal Justice and Incarceration Reform Plan. And I want to thank my staff who worked tremendously hard on this, my chief of staff, Jason Goldman, who hasn't gotten much sleep these last many weeks. He has a small baby and he's been doing this every single day and night. I want to thank Laura Popa, Peter Butler, Brian Crow and Alana Sivan, Raju Mann, the Director mm -hmm. of Land Use, who has been incredible in his team, Lillian Pascone, who has led this charge from day one, has been working for this on a weekly basis for over a year in a calm, cool, collected, organized, thoughtful, and measured way, George Sarkissian, Regina Pareto Ryan, Latanya McKinney, and Isha Wright. I'd also like to, again, again, I'd like to thank my predecessor, Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito for starting this conversation and for getting us to this point today. And I want to thank Mayor de Blasio and his entire staff, including his chief of staff, Emma Wolf, for partnering with the City Council to finally close Rikers Island. I see Liz Glazer and her team are here today. I want to thank you, Liz, and your team for your partnership and help in securing these investments to invest in communities, to build communities. You all have been part of that. I am proudly voting yes to close Rikers Island. This is the right thing to do. We have an opportunity to reform our justice system. We have an opportunity to invest in communities. We have the opportunity to help people. This will be a vote for a new criminal justice system, a vote against mass incarceration, which has robbed this city and this country of generations of men who left our system traumatized and broken. And this is a vote that recognizes the dignity of people and communities that have had their humanity overlooked for decades. This is a vote of conscience. This is a vote of progress. This vote does not serve to solve all of the problems that we face here in New York City. We still have a homelessness epidemic. Mm -hmm. We still have too many people not getting the mental health care that we need. We still need to break the school to prison pipeline. There is still more work to do, but conditions matter. These jails are disgusting. These jails should have been closed years ago. We are doing it today. I will proudly vote yes. Thank you all very, very much. We will now move into general discussion. Um, Madam Majority Leader, is it, I'm going to just call, if it's okay, on the four of the members. You have it? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So in general orders, we are going to start with Council Members Diana Ayala, followed by Council Member Karen Kosowitz, followed by Council Member Steve Levin, and followed by Council Member Margaret Chin, who will be speaking first, and then we'll follow with Council Member Inez Barron, and followed by Council Member Carlos Menchaca, and then followed by Council Member Drum. Council Member Ayala. Good afternoon, everybody, colleagues. Today's vote goes beyond the brick and mortar decision to build borough based jails. Today's vote is about delivering on a promise that this body made two years ago to close Rikers Island. It is about honoring the work of directly impacted leaders, so that many, many of whom have dedicated the past decade or more of their lives fighting for this very moment. Today's vote is about embarking on a historic opportunity to redefine our criminal justice system and greatly shrink the number of people incarcerated in our city. We all know that Rikers Island is antiquated. We know it's unsafe and inhumane. Reimagining our system demands its closure. We can no longer tolerate the penal colony that is Rikers Island, and we must move forward in creating a smaller, fairer, and more humane system that values the dignity of justice-involved people. With reduced height and a projected jail population of 3,300 by 2026, the borough-based plan will shrink our city's carceral footprint and will put us on the path to decarceration in a tangible way. We are going from 11 jails to four, from a capacity of 14,000 beds to 3,500 beds. This body has never been interested in an expansion plan. Since day one, our goal has been to minimize our jail system, and that is exactly what this plan will do. As an elected official, I have the responsibility of representing all of the individuals that make up my community. This, this includes representing constituents on Rikers and those who were formerly incarcerated there. Out of all of the neighborhoods impacted by this plan, the South Bronx has been the most affected by mass incarceration. That is why, since this proposal was announced early last year, I have fought for holistic investments rooted in restoration. My staff and I have met with local youth groups, justice-involved people, seniors, public housing residents, community board members, clergy leaders, and social service providers to cultivate a community investment plan reflective of their needs. I am proud to stand here today and share that our vision will be brought to fruition with millions of dollars earmarked by the administration for various investments. Some of those significant investments we secured include a new youth hub, uh, for My Haven, a new community center for Highbridge, renovations for community centers coupled with expanded programmatic funding for those sites, capital dollars for both our schools and public housing developments, an expansion of the Cure Violence Program, a new senior center at Millbrook Houses, plus a commitment to develop deeply affordable housing on several lots. I am immensely proud of our investment package because it was directly shaped by the impacted community and will go a long way in transforming the social service landscape in our neighborhood. It is a package that is directly aligned with Just Leadership's Build Communities platform, which recognizes that a well-resourced environment is key to preventing people from going to jail in the first place. Some are referring to the investments as concessions and negotiations. They are not. These investments are, heft, are a hefty down payment on the healing that the South Bronx deserves. Advocates are correct with the pro, that the, without these programs and services, we will continue to feed into the system. And that is contrary to, what this, to our collective goal. With these benefits in place, I have great hope for the future of my community. And I will continue to fight vigorously to ensure that all of those beautiful young people that I represent have a fair shot at life. While there are legitimate concerns about this plan, I want to remind my colleagues and everyone watching that we cannot condemn the failures of our, of our criminal justice system without having a plan to address them. This is frankly irresponsible. No plan is perfect, but this plan is the only plan that gets us closer to closing Rikers Island, and it is our moral imperative to do so. The fight to close Rikers Island is personal to me. As many of you know, my brother has a serious mental illness and has been in and out of uh, the prison system for over two decades. His repeated encounters with the criminal justice system has contributed to a decline to his social, emotional, and mental well-being. His story, which is the story of countless of other formerly incarcerated people, drives my commitment to this plan. Because of him, I dare replace our current system with one that is holistic, responsive, and most importantly, humane. 
before I cast my vote, I want to thank my predecessor, Melissa Marbiverito, for spearheading this effort during her tenure. I also want to thank Speaker Johnson, his incredible staff, Judge Littman and, and the commission, my colleagues, Council Members Levin, Chin, and Cass Lewis, and our plus ones, Council Members Powers and Drum, for their support throughout this process. I also want to thank the mayor and his, his team who have been incredible throughout this process as well. But most importantly, I want to thank all of the advocates and formerly incarcerated leaders from Just Leadership, Beyond Rosie's, Exodus Transitional, the Catal Center, Bronx Connect, and countless other organizations for fiercely advocating for this plan. If it wasn't for you, we would not be here today. Thank you for sharing your stories with us, inspiring us, keeping us accountable, and pushing us to deliver on this moral imperative. Thank you, and with that, I proudly vote aye. Thank you, Council Member Ayala. I received some text messages that I did not uh, receive previously. Uh, Council Member Danny Drum was actually up next. Thank you very much. I just want to mention um, the names of some of the folks who have died during my tenure while I have been in the City Council. And as many people know, I was one of the first elected officials to call for the closure of Rikers Island. I think it's really important that we remember those who died. So let me start with Khalif Browder, the child who was tortured to the point of suicide. Leline Polanco Extravaganza, the transgender woman who died in solitary confinement. Jerome Murda, who baked to death in his cell. Rolando Perez Jr., who was denied medication and left for dead after a seizure. Jason H. Avaria, who was ignored after eating a packet of powdered detergent that was given to detainees to clean out their sewage flooded cells. Ronald Spear, who begged to see a doctor but was refused and instead beaten to death by an angry corrections officer. And my friend, who survived Rikers but is dealing with a lifetime of trauma. And the countless New Yorkers who have known firsthand the, brutal, the brutality of what has become known as Torture Island, Rikers Island. I dedicate my vote to you, to our speaker, our former speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito, and to our current speaker, Corey Johnson, and to the advocates who have fought so tirelessly over the years for this day to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councilmember Drum. Councilmember Menchaca. I rise and speak to you all, colleagues, as the chair of the Immigration Committee. Serious questions have been raised in these last final weeks toward the vote that ask me to understand the things that I believe. I believe that there is nothing in the plan that guarantees investments in our communities to address poverty and insecurity. I believe that the mayor's plan does not actually close Rikers Island, despite the last minute and admirable attempts by my colleagues. I believe that this is not a vote to further the cause of ending mass incarceration by attacking its root causes. Instead, I believe this vote only enriches developers in the short term while leaving the fate of Rikers in the hands of a future mayor and a future council. Yet the mayor asks us to trust him. I do not trust this mayor. Do you? He asks us to trust that his investments will hold even though the majority are non-binding. He asks us to trust that the new jail facilities will not be jails, even though there are no design commitments and over 200 architects reject his proposal. And he asks us to trust him because he says he wants to close Rikers. I do not believe a mayor who, since 2015, had to be dragged, kicking and screaming to endorse the closure of Rikers. A mayor who continues to criminalize poverty by arresting immigrant delivery workers and carving out exceptions to legal representation for immigrants currently in detention. A mayor who has not already tried to demolish unused jails on Rikers Island, even though, even though there's a path to do so today. I believe that no matter the outcome today, we must unite for the ultimate closure of Rikers and continue reforms to end mass incarceration and build communities, not new jails. I believe in this body. I believe in you all, colleagues, and in our speaker. And I believe in our creativity and the ability to listen to people and the ability to get things done. We've been proving it the last few weeks. And as we frantically scramble to make the mayor's plan better, even, even though it's unsalvageable, I believe we should continue that work and we should continue forcing the mayor to make real investments in our community. And we should force the mayor to demolish the unused jails now, today. We should be fighting to end mass incarceration and all cages. Hermanos, hermanas, I vote no. 
on the borough based jail plan. We'll now have Council Member Karen Kosselwitz. <coughs> Nearly four and a half years ago, the pro proposal to finally close Rikers Island and open a borough based jail in my district came to my attention, and thanks to former Speaker Melissa Mark Beverito, who started this with the Littman Commission. While understanding the importance of closing the inhuman hellhole that is Rikers Island, I was troubled by aspects of the mayor's original proposal. However, understanding the high likelihood that this proposal would be approved, I made it my priority to sit down at the negotiating table and do the hard work of governing. It was my goal to make a better deal for my community, those that fall through the cracks of our criminal justice system and those that work at our jail facilities. Through many, many, many conversations that I ha have had with the mayor and his administration, I am proud to have secured many concessions that will make the facility better blend into our community. I also believe that the final proposal will better serve those that are incarcerated and those that have loved ones that are incarcerated. We significantly reduce the size and the height of the building. The facility will now stand 195 feet tall or 19 stories high a big drop from original 29 stories. We got rid of the proposed centralized infirmary, which was taken all people from all boroughs, have, have the square footage of the building, significantly reduced the density of the building, nearly cut the number of beds in half to 886 created hundreds of necessary parking spaces. We're investing millions of dollars into our schools. Significant investments are going into the neighborhood's infrastructure. We've secured important resources for our seniors. We're providing essential necessities to the less fortunate. And we've secured 25,000 square feet for community use. Now, some of my colleagues and members of the public do not support this plan. To them I ask, have you ever been to Rikers Island? Have you ever, have, <clears throat> have you ever been to the Queen's House of Detention? Because I have visited both locations and I can tell you that both are absolutely inhumane and are an embarrassment to our great city. New Yorkers, no matter their transgressions, do not deserve to rot in these tiny, dilapidated cages at Rikers or the Queen's House of Detention, especially up to 80% of the detainees at Rikers have yet to be convicted of a crime. If we, as body, want to do the progressive moral and just thing, we will vote yes on this proposal, because voting no with no substantial alternative will absolutely mean that Rikers Island will stay open for generations to come. There is nothing moral, just, or progressive about that. Let me also speak to my constituents, particularly those in Kew Gardens who I have heard from a lot the last several months. While I know that some of you do not understand my position on this proposal, I am confident that the future, future will calm your concerns. Remember that for 40 years, the Queen's House of Detention housed 500 inmates in Kew Gardens. I've been in the community for 56 years, and I can tell you that the facility did not jeopardize the safety of the neighborhood. It did not give... It did not negatively impact property values, and it did not change the character of the neighborhood. It's my highest priority that as we move to forward on this proposal, that 
there remain an open dialogue between the mayor and me to ensure that any negative impact in regards to the construction of the facility and the facility itself be minimized. I've been in the city council for over 20 years, both in the 90s and now, and this is the most difficult proposal that I have ever come across my desk. There, there is, there is a lot of nuance, a lot of passion, and a lot of emotion. I can tell you that nothing of this magnitude comes to fruition without a lot of hard work from a lot of individuals. I would like to thank at this time Judge Lippman, who had come forward with the Lippman Commission, and of course, uh, Council uh, Speaker Pass, Melissa Mark Beverito. I would also like to thank our people who have been there with every question that I have had. George Sarkeesian, Raju Mann, John Douglas, and Amy Levitine. You've also been wonderful, magnanimous on this whole thing. I also want to thank Brian Crow, Lillian Pascone, and, and a special thanks to Jason Goldman for being there every time I would call and ask a question. And of course, to my four three other colleagues that we've worked together and we stood together, I want to say thank you to Diana, to Margaret, and to Steve, thank you. And I also want to thank people from the mayor's office, Lydon Sleeper, who I didn't let breathe for a few days in the past couple of weeks, and uh, to Hera Moore and Joseph Thompson. And a special and appreciative to our speaker, our great speaker. I knew from day one that you would lead this body in a wonderful way. And I just want to thank you for being there for me, calming me down when I got nervous, and just being there, thank you so very much. And lastly, I will end by emphasizing that I would not support this proposal if I believe that it would have a ne negative impact on the community that I love. I've represented this community for two decades and have lived in it for more than a half of a century. And I could never in good conscience harm my neighbors. I passionately believe that this is a historic opportunity to rethink how we treat those that the city incarcerates. I vote my, I urge my colleagues to vote yes. Thank you, Councilmember Kozlowitz. In the interest of time, because we did start the stated meeting late, we are going to allow the members who have borough-based jails in their district to speak unlimited, but for the remainder of the members, we're going to have to start the clock because we have not even done the vote. So at this time, we're going to go to Council Member Margaret Chin and then followed by Council Member Steve Levin. We're going to begin now at this time. No, you are going to speak. Excuse me, Councilmember Diaz. Everyone that has signed up to speak will speak, but we are going to have to utilize the clock in order to be respectful of everyone's time. You will have an opportunity to speak. Councilmember Diaz, this conversation is closed. We're gonna now begin with Councilmember Margaret Chin, followed by Councilmember Steve Levin. Thank you, Majority Leader. From the beginning, I have held firm to my belief that Rikers Island must close. Years ago, people would have scuffed and called this go impossible. But now, this is a goal that so many New Yorkers share with convictions, including the majority of the people in this room. The point that we are at today, the moral and policy conversation that New York City is having now about envisioning a more humane criminal justice system 
that invest in lives and our roadmap to achieve that goal. This did not happen, originate with a single plan. I want to be clear, what got us here to this point was a painstaking year-long movement, not driven by outsider, but by those who were directly impacted by the system they sought to change. They have withstood the unimaginable and in spite of criticism, continue to fight to shut down Rikers once and for all. I want to tell the advocates and the survivor of Rikers Island, we see you and we thank you. To my constituents, I hear you. This was not a perfect process. From the beginning, we fought for greater transparency, community engagement, and a stronger plan that addressed your concern about construction impact, public health safety, and community investment. But I think it's really, for Chinatown, it's helpful to remember that the Manhattan Detention Center has coexisted with the neighborhood for decades. And the plan for the rebuilding a new site is not creating a new jail, but will transform the Manhattan Detention Center into a more humane and safe facility. This is a critical step that we cannot skip on the path to close Rikers. I wanted to, you know, thank my constituents for their passion and advocacy. Because of that, we were able to secure a health and safety plan for the senior resident and Chung Park, funding for community space and construction mitigation. Working with a resident, we secure a significant height reduction from 450 feet to 295 feet. This 155 foot drop ensure that the proposed jail will not be out of scale with the neighborhood. But my duty as a city council member cannot end at the edge of Lower Manhattan. Today, we are offer a choice. Do we finally condemn the moral stain that is Rikers Island to the history book, or do we let this opportunity slip by? Seizing this opportunity was not a decision I came to lightly. But there is no guarantee New Yorkers will see a chance like this for a very, very long time. We can no longer tell those who are trapped in a horrific cycle of incarceration to wait. We must turn the page. I want to thank all the advocates who have passionately challenged us to think bigger. But today's vote is not the end of our work to create a truly fair criminal justice system. We must continue to invest in our communities, move people with serious mental health needs out of our jails, expand alternative to incarceration, and end the broken policy that's designed to target marginalized people of color. We came a long way, and I wanted to thank our speaker, Speaker Johnson, for all your courage and support. You were behind us every step of the way. And my three other colleagues, Councilmember Ayala, Cosquiz, Levin, we band together, we hug each other, we say this is the right thing to do, and we are not gonna give up. There are so many people who helped us along the way. Speaker, your whole team, Jason and everyone, and, and the land you staff, Raju, and Jeff Yang, who literally met with community people holding a hand to find out exactly how we can get it done. Finally, to my staff, who have spent so many countless hours listening to constituents with me, we went to a lot of public hearing. I got called all kinds of names, but it doesn't matter because this is the right thing to do and we cannot let this opportunity slip by. No matter how we vote today, I know everyone has come to a judgment based on 
their own firmly held belief. But I firmly believe, and I am proud to vote to close Rikers now. And I also wanted to thank our former speaker, Melissa Mark Riverito, uh, for your leadership for starting the Lipman Commission. And thank you to Judge Lipman, who have also met with my community, met with us, and also the mayor's team, even though it wasn't smooth sailing all the way. but. We got you to really listen to the concerns of my constituents. And I think that what we have been able to put together will really close Riker and help us build community. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Chin. We will now hear from Councilmember Steve Levin. And moving forward, as everyone has done, this has been an incredible experience to see and hear everyone's discussion. So, we applaud like this in the council just to keep things moving smoothly. Council Member Levin. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. My friends, I'm, I'm very humbled to be speaking today as we are set to take this fateful vote. I would like to first say to everybody who has spoken up so passionately and so honestly from the depths of their being and experience that we have heard you, that we hear you today. We respect and we honor your voice. And to my colleagues here today, I know that however you vote, this vote will be a manifestation of that oath that we all made to ourselves when we were sworn in. Not the oath to defend and protect the city charter and the Constitution, but the oath to do the most good for the most people. And that is what we are called here today to do. Several years ago, when the world got to know what had happened to Khalif Browder, how he spent years at Rikers Island, much of that time in solitary confinement, based on the accusation of stealing a backpack, and how he died as a young man as a direct result of the trauma that he experienced at Rikers Island, robbed of his entire life, his entire future, and as he said in his own words, his happiness. We as a city and as a society were called to examine our conscience. Khalif Browder died in our name. But I believe that his death was not in vain. The Close Rikers campaign, which was born out of this tragedy, seemed impossible in 2016. But it was the dedicated righteousness of everybody who organized, who protested, who called on city officials, the mayor, council members, to reckon with what was being done in our name. The effort of the Close Rikers campaign and every person who dedicated themselves to it breathed life into our democracy, and they are true heroes. And this council speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito, took on this cause with her entire heart, having worked for years alongside Council Member Danny Drum to address conditions on Rikers Island. Her vision, by impaneling the Littman Commission, chaired by Judge Jonathan Littman, was absolutely essential in laying the path to today. And I want to thank Melissa Mark Viverito, our former speaker. I want to thank Judge Jonathan Littman and all the people who worked on the Littman Commission for seeing the potential before us, for seizing the moment and for challenging us in city government to respond, we would not be able, we would not be at the precipice of this momentous vote if it were not for their efforts. And today, after a multi-year process, we are voting to finally close Rikers Island one for, once and for all. This has been a difficult process, but if it were easy, we would have done this a long time ago. It took the courage of those formerly incarcerated and those who have been directly impacted to lead this charge. I'm also very proud of the leadership of my friend, Speaker Corey Johnson, who has been absolutely steadfast in his approach, fact-based, deeply rooted in his sense of decency and humanity and empathy. I could not be more proud to be associated now and forever with Margaret Chin, Karen Koslowitz and Diane Ayala. I have seen you up close throughout this whole process, 
and you are my heroes. Dostoevsky once said, you can judge a society by entering its prisons. For far too long, we have been rightfully judged by the world and by history, by Rikers Island, BHOD, the tombs, and the barge. We have a moral obligation to our brothers and our sisters to end this scourge as quickly as we can, and that is what we are voting on today. As part of this plan, as the speaker said, we are investing in communities harmed by incarceration and shifting toward a system that provides resources instead of jail time. Ending a system based on criminalization demands that we replace it with something better. Programs, housing, and support systems are needed to address the root causes of why people are put into the carceral system in the first place. And so today we're committing real dollars to invest in our communities and address our city's housing, social services, health care, and community justice needs. This includes new funding for transitional and supportive housing for justice-involved populations, mental health crisis response teams and respite centers, and increased funding for cure violence programs citywide. I'm particularly proud of the funding that we are able to secure for restorative justice programming. Informed by the leadership of innovators like Miriam Kaba and Danielle Sered, restorative justice offered us, offers us the ability to Quiet achieve- Quiet in the chamber. It offers us the ability to, uh, to, ability to achieve real healing and accountability for violent crimes. If we provide the opportunity for accountability rather than punishment, we create the potential for restoration for both the victim and the offender and take a step forward in healing our communities. This is how we shift away from a culture of incarceration. The council will newly invest $10 million into restorative justice programs, which is a tenfold increase, with an increased focus on community-based rather than just court-based solutions for felony level cases. In addition to this funding, we have also secured a community of justice innovation fund a first-time public-private partnership that will examine funding opportunities to strengthen community justice and public safety by focusing on truly community-based investments. We need innovation in criminal justice spaces, sorry, in community justice spaces, and we need to look to the experts, local leaders who live and breathe this work every day and are doing the work of uplifting their communities. These investments will move us dramatically closer to a world that does not rely on incarceration as a primary response to somebody who's in need of support and will provide critical resources to keep people out of the criminal court system entirely. I want to thank Mayor Bill de Blasio and his team at City Hall, in particular to Hira Moore, Leiden Sleeper, Emma Wolf, Dan Abramson, Julia Kerson, Jatad Floyd, Jordan Stockdale, as well as Liz Glazer, Dana Kaplan, and Chelsea Davis from MockJ, and, and uh, others that worked on this uh, from MockJ, in addition, uh, Joseph Thomas from the mayor's office, um, who from the day that this action was announced have all taken on this challenge with a real seriousness of purpose. I would also like to thank the members of the Brooklyn Neighborhood Advisory Committee for their amazing commitment of time, energy, and conscientiousness to this process. They made their community concerns known in a thoughtful manner, but more significantly, they prioritize the citywide needs for community justice reforms that while helping to reduce the size of the buildings themselves, were really priorities, the, the real priorities uh, for the NAC uh, were that they realize that we are not doing this just to close some buildings and open new ones, some jail buildings and open new ones. We are doing this to change how our city and by extension, how our society addresses community justice for future generations. I especially want to lift up the amazing work of Just Leadership USA, Catal Center, Judge Littman, Tyler Nims, and everyone who worked on the Littman Commission report, Exodus Transition, Beyond Rosies, and the Women's Community Justice Association, Fortune Society, Osborne Association, Vera Institute of Justice, and many others. Their work and advocacy, which has been based in unshakable faith has been as solid as the Rock of Gibraltar. I'd like to thank council staff that has worked so tirelessly on this and have put up with me with a lot of patience. Jason Goldman, Lillian Pascone, Raju Mann, George Sarkissian, Brian Paul, Brian Crow, Alana Sivan, um, Isha Wright, 
Regina Pareto Ryan, Latani McKinney, and everybody else that worked on this, thank you. I just also want to acknowledge specifically advocates and those who have been formerly incarcerated and leaders in the community um, for, their, for their great partnership. Darren Mack, Vidal Guzman, Brandon Holmes, Sharon Wright Harrigan, Deanna Hoskins, Harvey Murphy, Rita Zimmer, Sarita Daftari Steele, Lisa Schreibersdorf, Insha Rahman, Kendra Clark, Tamika Graham, Zachary Katz Nelson, Darlene Jackson, Danielle Rosario, Shane Correa, and, and I have a couple more that I'll get to on <laughs> during uh, uh, Donna Hilton, Curtis Bell. Let's see. Hold on. I'll get. Uh, I'll do more on the on when I explain my vote. Just just a couple more people. But I'd, and 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 in, in closing, um, I'd also like to thank everybody who spoke up in objection to this plan, including those in the No New Jails movement, including Miriam Kaba. While we have not agreed on many fundamental issues. I acknowledge their dedication and their commitment to decarceration. They have made abolition of jails and prisons a central part of this conversation, and I believe that we now have a better plan because they have, and probably will continue to, hold us accountable. Quiet in the chambers. This vote today will reflect on this council for many years to come. We, collectively as a city, are once and for all saying that we must end the era of mass incarceration and criminalization and usher in the era of community-based justice. Thank you. Thank you. Quiet in the chamber, we'll now hear from Council Member Inez Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I first want to acknowledge, as have uh, so many of my colleagues, the work that was done by the former speaker, I don't know if she's still here, Melissa Mark Vivito, and Danny used to sit next to me and he was always talking about Rikers and the conditions, so I have to acknowledge him as well. To all of the advocates who are here on this issue, I thank you for coming, I thank you for your restraint, you've really been very restrained, I thank you for that, and for all of the persons who've been involved in whatever level, I thank you for your input. I, mean, I want to make it very clear. I am supporting closing Rikers. I support closing Rikers, and I separate that from the new jails. I see the two as distinct. So I support closing Rikers, and I want that very clear on the record. Uh, historically, penitentiaries started when slavery ended. And it became a way Quiet of in continuing chamber. free, cheap labor once slavery had ended. And those offenses which had previously been fines were criminalized and became uh, felonies and people were incarcerated so that they could be a part of the convict leasing system. So that's the origins. So now as we talk about um, the People who are talking, well, someone recently said at an interview that the criminal justice system is often referred to as broken, but it's doing what it was intended to do. It's doing and continuing the origins of how it began. For me, the problems are inappropriate detention due to uh, over policing, due to judicial discretion where some judges will allow some people to be released in their own recognizance and others to be detained and not be able to meet bail. So there, that's a part of the problem. The other is the uh, over-policing and unconstitutional acts by the NYPD, since we're talking about New York, that put people in situations where they can be detained. And with all of that, there is insufficient and inadequate intervention and services, which we are now hearing about in great measure. When did this great epiphany come 
that this is what we need to be able to reduce the number of people. Now we understand, we woke up last week or last month or two months ago to understand this is what we need. We've needed it all along, and I question now why it's such a great uh, push to do this at this time, connecting it to no new jails. And with all of that, we need to address the culture that exists at Rikers. We need to make sure we're not just now dispersing what's been centralized in one location and putting it in four new locations. I just want to end by saying that I think that the intervention, the mentoring, the uh, affordable housing that is needed and the jobs that need to be available to those persons are critical. And as we talk about ending, closing Rikers and doing something else, Let's think outside the box. Why do we have to have these kinds of institutions that keep people? We need to, I think, give those uh, organizations, the cure violence, the violence interrupters, they have given results. Why not let them be the entities where persons who would otherwise be detained? Be, you better be here at 9 o'clock every day because we're going to train you, we're going to give you the mental uh, health services that you need, and all the things that we're talking about that are so needed. So I think that we need to, cha our challenge is to change the racial discrimination that is the basis of interventions and situations where people are detained. And I'll be voting no, but I respect all of you, and I believe we need to move forward and be even stronger and more creative in how we address those persons who have greater needs. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Barron. Quite in the chamber, we will now hear from Councilmember Powers, followed by Councilmember Diaz, followed by Councilmember Lander. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, as many have stated, today is a very big day in New York City, as Rikers Island is, an emblemat is emblematic of a broken criminal justice system, not just for New York, but for this entire country. Today's vote allows us to close Rikers Island, and we are doing that, tear down outdated facilities in the boroughs, and move on from an era where we treated jails and detention as the solution to so many of our city's problems. This process started with individuals impacted by the criminal justice system who were focused on reform and decarceration. It was a big idea that seemed to have no chance a few years ago. I admit myself that like many others, I needed some convincing that this was possible. The individuals that built this plan, and many are up here today joining us, did the work to make it happen. They were in the halls of the state legislature in Albany advocating for the reforms. They were in the city council attending our hearings. They were in our offices making the case for a different path forward. And now they are here today to see their organizing work. What began as a rallying cry and a slogan has become a reality. For two years, I've had the opportunity to be part of this conversation, the part of this movement to improve the treatment of incarcerated individuals and to transform the city's justice system. In my tenure, in our tenure, we passed several important bills already to make the justice system more fair. We held oversight hearings on safety and security, programming, transgender housing, and sexual abuse to shed the light on systematic issues that exist. And time and time again, we have seen how necessary this day is to mend much of that work. For those who refuse to believe it, this has always been about changing the criminal justice system and closing jails. This plan puts New York City on the path of reducing our footprint. It puts us on the path of reducing the overall, overall amount of beds and available capacity and improving the physical structure and the day-to-day -day lives in those buildings. But it does not end here. We have to continue to push for safer operations and better facilities to better meet the needs of both those who work there and stay in there. We must keep working to institute real cultural change. We must do more to prevent individuals from jail in the first place. And I will remind everybody, that is our job. As city council members, our job is to continue to do that. We can blame anybody we want. Some of us will still be here, and some of us will still care about this work. It is our job, it is incumbent on us, not to just move off of Rikers Island and close it, but to continue to do that work that many have done before I got here, and that many of us will continue to do past this, and many more in the future will continue. Uh, we will be passing a number of bills accompanying this that I think will help make this process even better. I have a legislation I hope all of you will support to set some minimum design standards in the facilities so we are 
correcting some of the mistakes that have been led to the conditions that we of today's jails, but also to memorialize the conversations that have been had all along the way. I want to commend many of those who helped us get here today. We've mentioned the former speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito, who kicked it, really kicked off this process. Judge Jonathan Lippman, who is, I believe is here. I want to thank the speaker and the mayor and all their staff for the rec recognizing the significance of this and my colleagues who are joining us in this historic vote. I want, to, I want to add to all the thanks to Alana and Brian and Lillian, to my staff, uh, Abigail, uh, to Zara, to Jason Goldman, to all of those, to Raju, it's a long list, of those who put in lots of hours, seen and unseen, to make today, today's vote happen. And to Steve, and to Diana, and to Margaret, and to Karen, you are a very big reason of why we are closing Rikers, and I am very proud to call you my colleagues. This is a beginning of a very big shift in New York City, and hopefully this will lead the way for the rest of the nation to reimagine justice. Thank you. I will be proudly voting aye later. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Powers. Councilmember Reverend Diaz. Thank you, Madam Chair Lady. It was so impressive to listen to the speaker so passionate, so intent, defending the project. The speaker used the word as inhumanity. The speaker used words as discrimination and savagery. It was very powerful. 45 minutes describing all the wrong things that the city is doing to the inmate. What the speaker failed to say, I'm going to say. Because he said the human, the human part of, the, of what we all feel, that we have to do good for the neighbor, for whoever, for, what, for everyone. And he's saying that. They want to create four new jails, one in the Bronx, one in Queens, one in Manhattan, and one in Brooklyn, none in Staten Island. Nobody asks why. Why? According to information that I have, the majority of inmates, or a great portion of inmates, in Rikers Island, come from Staten Island. And not only that, that this body that's supposed to be the progressive body of the world, they took this occasion for Europe and they made it into one. Each, each county is supposed to have, and then the board of delegation design, whatever, and then bring it. But no, each Four Europe's into one. Eat it. That's what they say. And they didn't respect the position of planning board number one in Bronx County that unanimously a planning board form, form of, from members of the community in unanimously voted against. They didn't care about that. They didn't care about that the board of president of the county is against it. They don't care about that. They didn't even care about that the community around Bakeman House, all of that and there, they don't want it. They don't care. We know better than you. And we will do this with four Europe's in one, and you're gonna, we're going to stick a jail in your neighborhood, none in Staten Island. All because the, the speaker said the, 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 the inhumane situation of the inmate. Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen. And the, pre, on, and the previous leadership of this county, of this, of this group, previous leadership, I, didn't never, I never saw that passion 
that intends in protecting the tenant of nature? That's inhumane. You want to talk of inhumanity? That's inhumane. You never took the passion having the children in nature dying from poison, from lead poison? That's inhumane. You never took the passion defending the people of nature that they can use. They don't have because they don't have money. Oh, we have 60,000 families living in shelter. Worse, worse, doing worse than, than, than inmates doing. There's no passion for that. The passion is because the inmates, we got it for that, okay. There's no passion. We got 60,000 families living like animals. In shelter, like animals. But no one, no one cares about that. We're going to come here to talk about how disastrous is the condition of people in Rockets Island. What is going to happen to the land of Rockets Island after that happens? So, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. We all know because we got to take care of the inmates. They have to have air conditioning. They have to have technology. They have to have the best. Mr. Speaker and ladies and gentlemen, you should come to the Bronx, to our, to, our, to our community schools in the summer. And go to those schools to you see how our children are put. They have no air conditioning. They have no air conditioning. So who put the passion in finding money to put air conditioning to our children? No, nobody cares. OK. Nobody cares. But to, for the inmate in Crackers Island, we got to you, we got to have their air conditioning. They deserve better. It's inhumane. Tell that to the 60,000 families in shelter. Tell that to the people in in in, 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 in Nacha. Tell that to the children in our public school during the summer. Go ahead. That's inhumane. That's discrimination. That's abusive to spend close to $10 billion to create four new jails so they could have air conditioning. You want a better life? We all want better life for, for, for our prisoners, for everybody. Take two billion out of that. Take Rackets Island, rebuild Rackets Island. Make a ball field park. They have, could play baseball. They could have football. They could have the best life. If, they, if, if what you want is to get them a hotel, what the best place to build them a hotel in Rugged Island? Go ahead. Use two billion dollars. Build them. Rebuild Rugged Island. Reverend Make it better. If you could begin to wind no, your comments no, down. Uh, what was that? No, that's not the that's not the rule. Reverend Diaz, the uh, rule is uh, that you have two minutes to speak. Anything above that is permission no, granted by me. No, that's not the rule, me. Madame. The rule is 10 minutes. Would you like for me to read you the rule? Wait, OK, Madame, I don't want to argue with you. Would I? Would I? Would I? So I'm asking would, you would to I? wind down your comments so that everyone will have an opportunity to speak today. Oh, you have spoken longer than uh, all of the other members. Uh, We're Madame, asking Madame, you to Madame, wind Madame, down Madame, your you comments. I understand, Madame. I, I, I understand. See? <laughs> I understand that, but see, the other guy was uh, Kev, uh, Levin. He was, he was uh, uh, announcing birthday and everything. He was granted permission because one of the borough-based jails can I, can I is in courtesy? his district. I, can I, have the same I asked you politely to begin to wind down your comments. I ask Simple you, as that. And I ask you, can I have the same courtesy as the rest? I'm asking you to wind down your comments. So I don't have the same courtesy. Excuse me? I don't, I don't have the same courtesy that the rest. Councilmember Diaz, everyone has had an opportunity to speak. If you could be respectful of your other colleagues, there are eight other members well, who would like to speak. I've been disrespectful. I am, I, see that? Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Next member, Councilmember Lander. 
Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I do just want to say I'm uh, proud to be a member of this body that did act to make sure that every single classroom in New York City will, in fact, have air conditioning, and it'll be done before we start building any of those new jails. So um, that is worth noting. <laughs> that we got done a couple years ago. At Yom Kippur services last week, I spent some extra time at the Quiet words of Quiet in the I chamber. At our Yom Kippur services last week, I spent some extra time with the words of Isaiah 58, in which God rejects the fasts of those who stop eating for the day, but who allow injustice to continue, saying, is not this the fast I desire, to free those who are wrongly imprisoned, to set the oppressed free, to break every yoke? Sitting in shul, I thought about the imprisoned people that I had visited last winter locked in frigid cold cages in the Metropolitan Detention Center in Sunset Park, and those in the brutally sweltering heat at the Brooklyn House of Detention that I visited during the heat wave this summer. I'm still wrestling with those words today. I don't like voting to build jails. Of course I would rather spend that money on housing, on schools, our community centers. And I know that we are not breaking every yoke. Still, I believe that the plan we are voting for today, made better by consistent public pressure and by the hard work of so many people in this room, our colleagues, and many, many more, it is our best chance to turn the extraordinary organizing work of the Close Rikers campaign into tangible, official, city-sponsored decarceral policy. And it is the most likely path to incarcerating the fewest people in the least inhumane conditions. Now, if we were to vote no, there is some chance that we could close Rikers without building new jails. That's a powerful vision, and it hums with the prophetic energy of Isaiah. But it seems to me, and I think we have to wrestle with this and take it very seriously, far, far more likely that Rikers, the barge, the tombs, and the Brooklyn House of Detention would remain open indefinitely with 17,500 cages in those abominable conditions that so many of us have seen. Now, that is not what prison abolitionists want, and it's not what I would want or what I would fight for, but given the challenges of overcoming the status quo even when we have a commitment, given the lack of clear policy consensus that would result from a no vote today, given the divisions of New Yorkers we're seeing even on this floor, I mean, many of those who will be voting no today want to keep Rikers open. And given the very real likelihood of backlash, I mean, have you watched the videos of New Yorkers opposing homeless shelters? I honestly think that is what is most likely to happen if a no vote were to come out of this chamber today. Indefinite, continued Rikers, indefinite, continued Brooklyn House of Detention, 17,500 inhumane cells. Now, of course, this plan is not perfect. I wish we were banning solitary today. I wish we were investing far more in building communities, but we cannot miss another chance to cement the closure of Rikers and the brutality that it represents. Just ask my friend and mentor who's up in the balcony, Herb Sturz. Herb started the work to close Rikers in 1980 as deputy mayor for criminal justice, and he has not stopped fighting for it over four decades. He marched every step of the way with just leadership, including the three and a half miles we marched together to Rikers Island in that beautiful and powerful march at the beginning of this campaign. Um, and we are lucky, Herb, to have you with us here today. I'd like to just make sure people acknowledge and thank you for your work. Come on, let's hear it for Herb Sturz. Council Member no. Lander. Yeah. We're going to ask you to start to wind down your I comments. I will start to wind down, Madam, Public, Thank you. Uh, Madam Majority Leader. Is today's plan on its own a guarantee? Of course not. Those of us who want a decarceral future, and especially those of us who vote for this plan, 
will have a responsibility to keep organizing to make sure that reforms are implemented and promises are kept. That is how democracy works, and that is what we will have to keep doing if we want to cut the number of those incarcerated in half, if we want to close Rikers and put it to better use, if we want to invest in communities what they all deserve. I pledge to it. I hope however you vote today, you pledge to it as well. One last thing I know for sure. I will not stop hearing the voices of those folks I met at MDC or the Brooklyn House of Detention or of Khalif Browder or of the advocates on all sides of this debate or sometimes even of Isaiah calling us to account and to continue working to break every yoke. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Lander. We'll now be followed by Councilmember Holden. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, the closing of Rikers has become a religious movement a symbol of criminal justice reform that will not actually solve the criminal justice system's problem. The plan before us today completely lacks common sense. Billions of dollars have already been invested uh, on Rikers Island throughout the years, and that infrastructure could be totally revamped for much less than the city will spend on this borough-based jail proposal. The vast majority of the people in this room today have never given a thought to reinvesting in Rikers and changing the culture there by transforming its facilities into modern, more humane criminal justice complex that includes standalone mental health facilities, family centers, green space for recreation, improved transportation through the use of ferries, and jails that allow more light and air inside. Instead, we are voting on whether or not to build skyscraper jails in the middle of already congested communities without even seeing complete designs of the buildings. The plan does not take into consideration the risks that these jails will present in the event of an emergency, nor does it consider the possibility of future spikes in crime, which I have seen in the past decades. If the council votes in favor of this plan today, it will be a vote against the best interests of the constituents who elected us it will also be against the best interests of detainees and correction officers who will continue to endure the same situations in even more confined vertical spaces. I believe this plan is irresponsible, this decision was rushed, and this council is not doing its due diligence. This is why I'm voting no today, and I don't need extra time. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Holden. We will now go to Council Member Richards, followed by Council Member Amprey Samuel. Thank you, Majority Leader. And I want to start off by saying I am not a pastor. I miss Church Sunday. But I'm reminded of a verse in Genesis, chapter 4, verse 9, am I my brother's keeper? Today's vote shouldn't be about political opportunism, and it must not be about nimbyism. Today's vote is about justice for all of those who are living in a permanent undercast system. Incarceration cannot be about barbarism. We are a civilized nation where we should be able to punish and rehabilitate without dehumanization. Today is about what Dr. King said 50 years ago, the fierce urgency of now. Justice delayed indeed is justice denied. For decades, the Jim Crow, the new Jim Crow, in the form of mass incarceration has been kept well alive, shepherding in black and brown faces on an island that serves to honor Richard Ricker, Riker, a man who abused the Fugitive Slave Act for decades. And while he died in 1842, in 2019, the physical and mental chains of slavery have continued to choke black and brown lives to death in this so-called land of the free, where mothers, children, and families are torn apart, leaving destabilized communities across our city. I represent one of them, Far Rockaway. Because we all know, when you get out of jail physically, that doesn't mean you're out of jail mentally. Today, I'm reminded of a 19-year-old young black man who couldn't make bail, who languished, languished 
on Rikers Island for three years over accusations of stealing a book bag. And while Khalif Browder isn't here to witness this vote, I want his mother to know that his death was not in vain. But I'm not going to stop there. I'm not going to stop there. Quiet in the chamber. Let's not forget the man in the White House representing our nation who sparked sensationalism and historical hysteria that led to the wrongful convictions of the Central Park Five, including Corey Wise, who languished on Rikers Island for far too long. Don't shed no crocodile tears for them and vote against this plan. We owe it to them to close that hellhole called Rikers Island. We owe it to every person who stepped foot on Rikers and never came home the same, my family members and friends included. We owe it to every family member who took off work to take several trains and buses to visit their loved ones on Rikers only to get turned around at the bridge because of a lockdown. We owe it to those detainees who drove on those buses over the bridge and whose dreams were cut short and left on that bridge. We owe it to the public defenders, the corrections officers, the health of professionals who spent far too much time trying to manage a broken system on Rikers Island. But most of all, we owe it to the next generation of at-risk youth that could have their lives derailed in the hellhole called Rikers Island, and for God, by God's grace, I was not one of them, but very close. Can you begin I proudly to vote yesterday comments? for Khalif Browder, Corey Wise, my family, friends, and all of those who've had stories just like this, too numerous to tell. I just want to end by thanking my colleagues. I call them the Freedom Riders of 2019 in New York City. My colleagues, Karen Kostowitz, Diana Ayala, Steve Leverin, Mark, Margaret Chen, and most of all, our speaker, for their bravery in getting this done. You exuberated bravery. And Karen, I want you to know that I have so much more respect for you, because I know for a fact there were people in your community, and some people, who said, put that jail on Jamaica Avenue, OK? But I want to thank you for standing up for black and brown you, because you don't look like me. My complexion's a little darker than yours. But you stood up for justice, and I want you to know I have such a deep respect for you. With that being said, thank I you. will proudly vote aye later. Thank you, Councilmember Richards. We'll now hear from Councilmember Amprey Samuel. I'm actually sad today. I wish I could stand here and say something different but that would be fake. We are closing Rikers. This is about the plan. Since 2017, I've expressed my concern about Rikers Island and have stated the need to close Rikers. Let it be known, I am in support of the closure of Rikers. I come from a world of trips to Rikers, a world of going up north to visit family members, not tours. I also come from a background of visiting jails and prisons as a human rights officer for the United States government. Every New Yorker who has been in Rikers, either waiting for their court date or visiting family, deserve a more heartfelt, intentional planning, and they deserve more now, not just a list of negotiated commitments over the past few days or weeks. In order to provide humane living conditions in our city's jails, we must first acknowledge that we are talking about people, people with lives before they existed in an incarcerated or detained state. We should be talking about people with the people, men and women who deserve to have stable homes and a reliable education system, a career path, health care, among basic building blocks that have proven to keep Americans from living the life in and out of the prison system. But we as a body, for planning of this magnitude, addressing an unjust system of racism and mass incarceration, this process has been inappropriately rushed. I don't have enough minutes in my remarks to explain all the flaws in the process of us getting to this vote today. What we have adopted for the borough-based plan, in some communities, we left many others most affected by the school-to-prison pipeline relegated to the sidelines, an afterthought. 
I know this because I represent those communities, although I don't represent the building where it will be built. The 41st Council District includes what is known as million dollar blocks. That means we spend a million dollars a year on average in New York City and in the state incarcerating my constituents in just one block. Million dollar blocks in Brownsville, Crown Heights, Bed-Stuy, and East Flatbush. Their circumstances are my concerns, and this process did not address the circumstances that led them to Rikers Island, that led them to the state penitentiary, or those coming home daily, reuniting with their families, or the inability to reunite with their families. My fight has been about funding for preventive programs and funding to address violence. I've received tons of promises over the past 48 to 72 hours. I simply ask for details about the plan and the prior, uh, prioritization of the districts most impacted with specific programs, similar to what Councilmember Ayala was able to accomplish in the Bronx. That would be amazing across the city in communities with the same need. So as I move forward with my colleagues, my only goal and my only vision is to make sure that the communities I serve, those that look like my community, have the support and the resources they need and deserve that's tangible. I have to go home to my district and explain this vote. I have to explain this to my constituents with tangible results. I can't do that today. But I do want to say congratulations to my colleagues on your victories. I really do see them as victories, and I'm happy for you. I wish I could say the same for Brownsville, East Flatbush, Crown Heights, and Bed-Stuy, those million-dollar blocks. But I look forward to having a voice on behalf of my people in the next phase of planning because it was not included in this process. My vote is for my district, always left out of discussions and decisions. My vote is with my people. Thank you. Thank you. We will now hear from Councilmember Borelli. Thank you. And uh, even though I'm sure most of you can imagine my vote, uh, congratulations to some of my colleagues for, for, uh, for uh, working hard, at least, uh, on something. Uh, I've been pretty public about my opposition. Quiet in the chamber. And Councilmember Borelli, can you please speak into the mic? It's so short, though. I'm so tall. <laughs> So I've been pretty, uh, pretty outspoken about my opposition uh, to the plan, uh, and uh, specifically uh, where the jails will be going, the, the idea of, of closing Rikers uh, Island in the first place. Um, but I, I only rose today just to uh, make one mention of something, and I know most of my colleagues here know, know I do like them very much, uh, but it does concern me that with two exceptions, uh, nobody had mentioned the ongoing attacks on correction officers. Uh, had this been any sanitation garage, and hundreds of sanitation workers were assaulted, uh, you know, dozens per month were stabbed, slashed, beaten. This would be the only thing the City Council would be talking about. If it was happening in any school or any DEP facility or any, any city facility elsewhere where thousands of our employees were under constant threat of attack, uh, and suffering serious illnesses. It would be on the front page of all of the newspapers from our friends over there and our cameras over here. Uh, so I am concerned that not only is the plan not addressing the immediate needs of correction officers, uh, but that there just seems to be no focus on that aspect overall. So thank you. Thank you, Council Member Borelli. We'll now hear from Council Member Gredenchek. Thank you, uh, Majority Leader Cumbo. Um, it's been a long path for us to get to this point, um, but some things are certainly clear. Rikers Island is old. We haven't built a jail there in 30 years, and none of the people that built that jail are still around in the Corrections Department today. Um, it has to be closed, and anybody who doubts that should read Preet Bharara's report on what happened to adolescent males who were incarcerated on Rikers Island. I doubt that you will get past the summary that is how shocking it is. I don't want to be a party to that, and my conscience doesn't allow me to be. This process, as I said, has been challenging. Information has been difficult to come by. As recently as the preliminary budget hearings, we couldn't get hard facts. And anybody who knows me is, 
knows that I am very careful how we spend the taxpayers' money. And eight and three quarter billion dollars, a lot of money, even in New York City. And some people rightfully argue that we could be doing other things with this money. But I believe that this city is big enough and has a big enough heart and enough money to do all those things that we need to do, and we will do them here in New York City. I think that the move to borough-based jails is common sense approach to government. My colleague Diana Yala a few minutes ago, maybe a few hours ago, suggested that no plan is perfect, and she's absolutely right. It's not a perfect plan. This plan is going to change some, and I understand that I've been in government long enough to know that plans change, hopefully for the better, not always, but hopefully for the better. But I think it's a good start, and I think it's something that we can build on. I believe in second chances. Every day I wake up, I figure it's a new chance. I've been granted a new chance. I believe in third chances and fourth chances and 10th and 15th and 20th chances because we're all human and we all make mistakes, and people need those chances. I want to talk about something that I really talk about, and that's my oldest brother. Sixty years ago, almost, when there were no drug rehabilitation facilities, my oldest brother was a heroin addict. Most heroin addicts at that time, almost all of them, in fact, went to jail, because that's what you did with heroin addicts in the late 50s and early 60s. You sent them to jail. My brother got a progressive judge, maybe a common sense judge, maybe even a conservative judge, I don't know. But he offered him a chance at a place called Daytop Village, which was located in Councilman Borelli's district in Butler Manor. And my parents and I and my other siblings spent a lot of weekends taking the ferry to Staten Island, there was no Verrazano Bridge in those days, and visiting my brother. And it took him a couple of years. He got out of Daytop, and he spent a good chunk of his life helping other people to escape the throes of drug addiction. He is living today in Florida, and he is the sweetest guy in the world, except for Danovan Richards. <laughs> but I don't know that he would have survived jail. And I know that what we're doing today is a much more humane approach to criminal justice in this city of New York. The Wall Street Journal today said that we led the way on reduction, great reductions in crime in this city, and that's taken place over the last quarter century. So I like to think that our great city that has led the way on so many different things will lead the way in a new era of penology and helping people and giving them second chances and third chances and fourth chances and as many chances as we as a society can afford to give them. So in honor of my brother, I proudly vote aye on all today and I thank you for indulging me, Madam Majority Thank you, Leader. thank you, and thank you for sharing your truth. I'd now like to call on Council Member Rodriguez followed by Council Member Councilmember Rodriguez, followed by Councilmember Van Bramer, and then followed by Councilmember Espinal. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, former Speaker Liberito, Mayor de Blasio, and all the colleagues. When I was elected in 2009, I introduced a language for the legislation to call to close right designing. I was told that the city didn't have jurisdiction to close right designing. It happened in the previous administration. But when we, the progressive, took over the city council, and we had a mayor that not necessarily we agree on everything, but we understood that it was time for us to move forward, we started having real discussion, real conversation. We, we have a president and his followers promoting violence and most of the funding going to the military instead of social services. When we look at the 13th Amendment documentary that show that incarceration is an extension of a slavery, 
let's call it what it is. We have to stop it. This is still the result of a society that lived in the past in real segregation and that is still today, as we are trying to move forward and have real discussion. If you are black, Latinos, immigrants, poor, you have a higher percentage to be stopped by the police and to be sent to a detention center. So today, we are not expecting that with a plan that we will be voting today, we will close this chapter. This is only a beginning of an effort where we are committed to not only celebrate Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, Cesar Chavez, we are committed to leave our fingerprints, to leave a nation where we should change our number. We have more people in jail than any country in the whole world. That's our number. And that affects all cities, and we are not excluded. We visited Rackets Island together with Danny Drum and others when Elizabeth Crowley, she also was moving some ideas for criminal justice reform. The day, the day came today, and I called my colleague, don't take it personal. This is about being immigrants, being poor, being black, being Latino, living in a community that is segregated as we talk today. The only thing that I call the speaker is that we use your leadership and work with the mayor to build a second phase of these investments. We also should add an additional $10 billion to build CBOs in our local community, to provide those CBOs who are serving those poor neighborhood immigrants their own buildings so that they don't have to struggle to provide the services. Because if you are poor children, immigrant children, you don't have the same program of art and music and gymnastics and education that a middle class and an upper middle class children get in our city. Hoy nosotros estamos haciendo historia. Es una historia de hacer una reforma a un sistema criminal que es racista. Que no es cierto que la justicia es ciega. Si usted es inmigrante, si usted es pobre, si usted es negro, si usted es latino, Usted tiene más probabilidad de ser parado por un policía y ser mandado en Rackets Island. Vivimos en una nación donde tiene más preso que el mundo entero. Tenemos un presidente que promueve la violencia, él y los que lo siguen. Y si, sigue, si continuamos viviendo en una sociedad que el Departamento de Estado pone más dinero para lo militar que el servicio social, Vamos a tener mucha persona presa y eso lo tenemos que parar. So today we will be voting to close Rackets Island Thank you, to Council make major reform, and this is only a beginning. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Rodriguez. Now we're going to hear from Councilmembers Van Bramer and then Espinal. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Majority Leader. First, I just want to say how much I respect this process today and my colleagues and the activists, whether uh, we agree on how we're voting today or we disagree. I think, uh, uh, except for maybe a couple of uh, things, uh, debates like this highlight uh, how good this body is mm -hmm. and how decent uh, the members here are and how, regardless of how we're voting, uh, people are voting their conscience and are sharing uh, deeply held feelings and emotions. I don't uh, cast aspersions on anyone's motivations uh, and why they're voting and how they're voting today. I want to start by saying that I too believe Rikers is a human rights atrocity and it must close. And I want to acknowledge the work, uh, as so many have before me, of Councilmember Drum, Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito, all the activists who forced the city uh, to realize that it must close. Uh, we've got to be able to have these challenging public policy debates that are emotional because they're so important, uh, yet they're civil. Uh, almost all of us, almost all of us, want to close Rikers. Uh, but it's how this plan gets there that presents issues for me. I want to say also 
that Councilwoman Barron, I want to uplift her comments and associate myself with her remarks. Uh, so many people uh, in the past have said uh, Inez Barron is so smart, but boy, is she radical. But boy, is the world catching up to you, Councilmember Barron. Um, I also want to say uh, to Councilmembers Menchaca, uh, Councilmembers Chin, Councilmembers Levin, we may be in different places on this, but boy, do I have so much respect for each of you. I believe that systemic and structural racism and violence inflicted on black and brown communities for generations represents the greatest sin of this nation. And the criminalization and brutalization of people of color led to mass incarceration and the prison industrial complex that we seek to end here today. All of that coming to an end should be all of our life's work. But that's precisely why, for me, voting to invest $10 billion right back into that system is something I cannot do. Closing Rikers brings desperately needed justice, absolutely. But given the scale of violence perpetrated against communities of color, it's maximum justice that we must seek today. So we must close Rikers, and it will close. I support that. But I'm a no on the plan to build four new mega jails to accomplish that. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Van Bramer. And we will have Council Members Espinal and then followed by Council Member Gibson. Thank you, uh, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, my comments are in the same vein as Alika, Amphrey Samuel, and Inez Barron. Uh, I represent East New York, Bushwick, and Brownsville, uh, communities that, uh, if you look at the numbers, have some of the highest incarceration rates, and a lot of our constituents are uh, sitting in Rikers Island. But before I say anything else, uh, I want to make it clear that I do believe that Rikers Island should close. I do believe that my colleagues have done a great job in, in fighting to get all of the investments they can out of this plan. Uh, and I do believe that uh, our, our incarcerated deserve to have better facilities. Um, the issue is very personal to me and my constituents on many fronts. I visited Rikers Island on many weekends, was subjected to the same long bus ride, the long wait times, and the many pat-downs before seeing a loved one. On one night, I stood outside for 24 hours while waiting for a bail to be posted, hearing the stressful, stressful noises of the landing airplanes in LaGuardia and breathing in the toxic chemicals that pollute the island. I thought to myself at that moment that Rikers Island is an island of hell. But I'm voting no because I feel the conversation City Hall has started has not gone far enough. Like many people in Rikers today, I was born in East New York in the height of the crack epidemic. My neighbors were handed over to cops instead of social workers and had nowhere to go but street corners. Instead of social programs, they ended up in Rikers. When the city should have been pumping money into nurturing and strengthening my community, they instead neglected and abandoned it. I'm voting no because I can't vote yes on a plan that spends $8.7 billion but does not match this investment in all at-risk communities in the city. Where are the billions to break the school-to-prison pipeline? Where are the billions to clean our air? Where are the billions to keep our streets safe? What we are saying by not matching this plan dollar to dollar is that we can afford to incarcerate New Yorkers in newly built facilities, but we cannot afford to make long-term investments that will prevent the youth of today from being incarcerated tomorrow. There are too many half-formed solutions. We need to fully invest in building stronger, well-rounded communities, and I believe we can do better. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Espinal. We will now hear from Councilmember Gibson, who will close this session. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon to all of my colleagues. Thank you for being here. This afternoon, this City Council will take a bold and courageous step to finally close an institution that has been a systemic environment of abuse, of mistreatment, and violence all around. For far too long, Rikers Island has been a sad state of culture of violence for detainees, the uniform staff, the medical staff, the legal division, and everyone that works there every single day. After so many months of advocacy by those most affected, the advocacy groups, CBOs, legal service providers, and so many others, we are presented with this unique opportunity to do something different, to finally address criminal justice reform and change the culture and atmosphere by which we reform, rehabilitate, and reshape the lives of those accused of crimes in our city. 
Today, we act on an issue that has plagued far too many communities of color and young men and women of color, many of which I represent in Bronx County. So I want all of my colleagues to understand how we got here today. 20 years ago, the incarceration rate at Rikers was 20,000 detainees. Today, we are at 7,000. Crime rates spiked in the 1980s and 90s when we were hit with the crack epidemic. And now today, the lowest numbers in crime that we have seen in decades. This body, this city council, has historically for 20 years invested in ATIs and ATDs and reentry work, providing alternatives for young men and women involved in the criminal justice system. And it's proven successful. The New York City Crisis Management System, which we started in 2011 in five neighborhoods to focus on a holistic approach to addressing gun violence with wraparound services for clients to succeed. And now today, $30 million plus dollars invested over 22 areas across five boroughs. Couple that with supervised release programs, mental health services, transitional services, more reentry, restorative justice, plus all the new state policies coming down to this city, including bail reform, speedy trial, and open discovery. Colleagues, we're on our way to reducing the jail population even further and giving our constituents a more humane and safer environment that is closer to home. So for this, body today. I choose to be on the right side of history for my constituents who live the everyday reality of today's Rikers Island. I choose to improve the conditions by which those who are detained, accused, not guilty, and also the uniform, medical staff, everyone who works on these jails every day, they all deserve better. And it's our responsibility to do right by them. That's what we were elected to do. This proposal before us, my colleagues, is beyond our egos. It's beyond our personal views. And simply put, Thank you, it's transformational. Gibson. And so I ask all of you to understand this is more than the construction of four buildings. We have to be bold enough, courageous enough, and deliberate enough to do right by our constituents. And I thank everybody, the speaker, the former speaker, Chief Lippman, and everyone who's played a role in this. Thank you for your relentless efforts and holding our feet to the fire. I will stand with my people of the Bronx, and I'm voting yes on this proposal and every item on today's agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Gibson. And we are now going to go to the report of special committees. But prior to doing that, I just want to remind members as we move into the vote, in the Council Handbook on the Rules of the Council, 9.160, the two-minute rule, a member desiring to be excused from voting or to explain a vote at a stated meeting may, when his or her name is called, make a statement for no more than two minutes. So we are now going to move into the report of special committees. None. Report of Standing Committees. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing, intro 1657A, Street Vending. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Criminal Justice, pre-considered intro 1742A, 1759A, and 1762A, Rikers Island. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, pre-considered Reso 1093, Business Improvement Districts. Coupled on general orders. Pre-considered LU 555 and Reso 1100, and pre-considered LU 556 and Reso 1101, Tax Exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on General Welfare, intro 153B, three-quarter housing. Amended and Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, pre-considered Reso 1091, City Map Amendment. Coupled on general orders. LU 496 and Reso 1102 through LU 499 and Reso 1105, landmark designations. Coupled on general orders. LU 513 through LU 526 on page 9, borough-based bail system. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to section 197D of the New York City Charter. Excuse me, excuse me, LU5. 527 and Reso 1106, UDAP Queens. Coupled on general orders. LU 528 and Reso 1107, Doctors Row Historic District. Coupled on general orders. LU 529 and Reso 1108, Sidewalk Cafe. Approved with modifications and coupled on general orders. LU 531 through LU 533, Vernon Boulevard, Broadway Rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 534 and Reso 1109, LU 535 and Reso 1110. 
10 Lefrak City Parking Garage. Coupled to general orders. LU 538 and 539 35th Avenue rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 540 and Reso 1111 through LU 542 and Reso 1113 zoning map amendments. Coupled to general orders. LU 543 and 544 Terrence Cardinal Cook. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 545 and Reso 1114 through pre-considered LU 557 and Reso 1117, various applications. Couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Mental Health, Disabilities and Addiction, Intro 1590A, Mental Illness Reporting. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar now, LU 513 and Reso 1118 through LU 544 and Reso 1137 on page 21. Couple of general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. A couple of different orders, and at this time, I'm asking for a roll call vote on all of the items that were just read off that is on today's general order calendar. Thank you. Adams. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, madam. Today we vote on a plan to close Rikers Island. And as one who has had a child in the system, however brief, I would rather have had my child closer to home. As one who was raised by a proud mom who was a retired captain from the New York City Department of Correction, my directive from my mother was that Rikers should have been closed a long time ago. Today, colleagues, is the only opportunity that this sitting body will have to vote to close Rikers Island. We cannot wait for the possibility of a maybe, a possibility of another plan, a possibility of another proposal. Today is the only opportunity that this sitting body will have to vote to close Rikers Island. So on the strength of my strong, proud mother, on the strength of all the present and formerly incarcerated individu individuals that pushed us to not only invest in new buildings, but pushed us to invest in new opportunities. I stand on their strength today to say, I vote I to close Rikers Island on the strength of my mother, on the strength of my child, on the strength of those that are flourishing, dying, and depressed on Rikers Island as we speak. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Councilmember Adams. Gibson. I vote aye on all, and thank you once again, colleagues, for your tremendous passion and commitment to making the lives better of all New Yorkers. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Ampri Samuel. I vote aye on all, um, with an exception, I vote no on the borough-based jail system bills, and I do congratulate my colleagues on your victories. Ayala. I vote aye on all. Barron. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. I just want to call my colleagues' attention to land use 545. It is a land use item which has an infill project with new homes that have been built, and the income targeted requirement is, are those from 80 to 100% of the AMI. Once again, those are homes that are targeted for people whose incomes are between 80 to 100% of the AMI. And there are nine two-family homes, and there are four three-family homes. And I want to encourage us to look for those kinds of opportunities for home ownership at a price that people can actually afford. And finally, I vote aye on all with the exception of 513 through 516 and 518 through 526. As my colleague uh, has said, this, the, these, this, these verb-based jails do not address the conditions that led to people being detained. It does not address the inappropriate detention that disproportionately affects black and brown. It does not address the subjectivity of judicial discretion which favors whites. It does not address the unconstitutional practices of the NYPD, which again addresses the black and 
brown communities and poor communities, and it does not address the insufficient, inadequate intervention vis-a-vis -vis education, mental health, economic development, jobs, and affordable housing, and it does not address the culture that presently exists in Rikers. So for that reason, I'm voting no on those. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Barron. Borelli. Thank you. I vote aye on all except uh, pre-considered intro 1759-1762, uh, land use items 513 through 516, 518 through 526, and pre-considered reso 1091. Thank you. Brennan. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. It's great to see so much press here to cover my Diker Heights Lights Christmas bill. Um, <laughs> Landmark legislation. Um, I just want to um, congratulate. You know, we, you hear a lot about you, you hear a lot of talk about political courage, um, and it is not easy to balance the needs and desires and doing the best for your district while also doing what's best for our city. Um, so, to Margaret and Stephen, Diana, um, and of course Karen, um, it's really, really something to look up to and admire the courage that you, you guys have had, and of course, Speaker Johnson in leading the way on this, uh, something that when it first came up um, under Melissa, Speaker Viverito was really, we never thought it, we'd, we'd see it happen, and here we are taking a first step to make it happen. So, um, and with thanks to uh, Jason Goldman for helping me with my local bills today as well, uh, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Cabrera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you so much. I want to first uh, thank the speaker uh, for whether we hold differences of opinion. The fact is we did have a fair process. Today I'm concerned about the $8.7 billion that we're going to incur in this as a result, a direct result of this, of this bill. Let me tell you what that's going to translate into. Right now, we're paying $9 billion in service debt. $9 billion. This year, we're going to go into $10 billion. What that means, for the first time, as a matter of fact, for the very first time in the history of New York City, we're going to owe over $100 billion. Meaning that next, next, this year coming up, when we sit down and we start talking about all of the projects that we want to get done in our district, when we talk about all of the community services that we desperately need, and we applaud the cure of violence community that has worked, but they need more resources. We need more community centers such as those that we're going to see in the Bronx in Councilmember Ayala's district. We applaud what we're getting in those districts, but the fact of the matter is, we're going to be lacking the resources. Sooner or later, we're going to hit this wall. We're going to hit a wall when we're going to start uh, finding ourselves not being able to pay to help our young people, because at the end of the day, let me tell you, I'm tired of seeing our young people getting incarcerated. Tired of seeing them not having jobs. Now, every, every year we have to come here and fight with the administration to be able to get more summer jobs instead of having jobs on demand for every single one of our young people so our young people could have a greater opportunity. And with that, I vote no on LU 513 through 516, 518 through uh, 26. No, and pre-consider 1742, 1759, 1762, A, and 1091, and, and I on the rest. Thank you so much. Thank you. Chin. I proudly vote I on all. Thank you. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye on all. Carnegie. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Rikers has been a symbol of torture, trauma, and extreme violence, and it's time to close it down. 
Too many generations have been failed by Rikers, a decrepit campus of facilities which is a symbol of New York City being home to one of the most devastatingly egregious penal systems in the United States. It's time for a new start. It's time for reform. The status quo is unacceptable. For years, before running for office or representing the 36th District, I worked on Rikers Island in the Department of Social Services and in the Department of Substance Abuse. I remember fighting for access to the housing units and trying to get out of my office and provide direct support to people who were incarcerated. As an elected representative of one of the most incarcerated communities in New York City, I recognize the urgency of ending mass incarceration and a massive overhaul of our pretrial detention system that the closure of Rikers Island requires an overhaul that advocates were able to bring into fruition in this year's state legislative session. One of my proudest moments in the council was sponsoring and ultimately passing the Khalif Browder bill into law in 2017, which requires the city to provide access to education and social services to people awaiting trial. Shrinking the system and approving this ULERP in combination with the state level criminal justice reforms allow us the opportunity to close Rikers and continue pushing forward with decarceration policies like increased mental health, alternatives to incarceration, and diversion programs. The transformative, I'm sorry. The transformative systematic change we seek to achieve in making these choices will not happen overnight, but delaying any further will only ensure the inevitable continued existence of Rikers, the Tombs, the Brooklyn House, and the Barge. The status quo is unacceptable, and a better future is within our reach. That's why I'm voting yes to all. Deutsch. Uh, no on intro 1742, 1759, 1762 in Reso 1091, and no on LU 513 to 516, and 518 to 526, I and the rest. Yes. Permission to spray my book? Yes, sir. Gracias. Gracias. A la prensa hispana que está aquí, mi voto va a ser defendiendo a aquella gente que vive en los proyectos públicos que tienen que sufrir el abuso de no tener calefacción porque no hay dinero para arreglar las boilas. Mi voto es a favor de aquellos niños en las escuelas públicas que tienen que pasar todo un verano sin, sin aire acondicionado. Mi voto es a favor de las familias que están desamparadas, que no tienen vivienda, que 60 mil familias que viven en, en, en shelter porque no tienen dinero para arreglarla y yo no puedo votar para que se gaste 11, 11, 11 billones de dólares para construir cuatro edificios de prisiones cuando todas esas familias que son mi familia están enfermas. My vote is for my family, for the, for the people that live in, in NYCHA, for those that doesn't have a voice to defend them because they have to suffer every single year uh, without money because there's no money to fix the, the boiler. My vote is for those children that have to suffer the summer in, in our public school because they, they have no air conditioning and they have no money to fix them. My vote is for those 60,000 families that live in, in, in shelter because there's no money to, for housing. I cannot vote to spend uh, 10 or $11 billion to build four jail building while they are suffering. So I'm voting no in LU 513 to 526, Reso no in resolution 1118 through 1130, and also no on resolution 10. 92. Thank you very much. I will say goodbye. Muchas gracias. Thank you. The drum. I uh, proudly vote aye to close the hell hole known as uh, Rikers Island and on all other items on the calendar. Thank you. Espinal. Uh, I, I proudly vote aye on all except the land use call ups uh, in regards to the borough based jails. Eugene. I vote aye. I. 
Jonai. I vote on aye on all except for pre-considered resolution 1091. Gordenchik. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to make additional remarks um, except to say that, um, sorry, can't help myself. Uh, you know, th this isn't about a choice between this or that. I don't think, based on my four years almost here, that you'll find somebody more concerned about the cost of doing business in the city of New York. It's not cheap, we know that. But we can do both, and we have to do both. And we have to help the people in NYCHA, and we have to fix our streets, and we have to fix a lot of things in this city, and we do that. We spend tremendous amounts of money. And we're not spending eight and three quarter billion dollars tomorrow. It's gonna to take a long time to spend all that money. And hopefully it'll be a smaller number than that because the facilities have gotten smaller. So with that, I vote aye and all. I'm going to waive the balance of my time. Quiet in the chamber. I only have one vote, folks. Um, I waive the balance of my time because my council has tickets to a team that plays something that resembles baseball in the Bronx tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councilmember Godencheck. Again, we have asked that we respectfully hear all of the votes. Any further outbursts in this way will be taken as an assault on the security of this body, and you will be escorted out. So continue with the vote, and this is the final call and the final warning on this particular issue. Next. Holden. I and all accept preconsidered Reso 1091, LUs 513 to 516, LUs 518 through 526, and all accompanying Rezos. Thank you. Ku. Majority Leader, may I explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, actually, you know, the save time, I'm not going to explain my vote, I vote yes. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Kozlowitz. Can I explain my vote? Permission granted. I'm not going to talk long. I just forgot to mention Alex Anderson from my office who worked very, very hard with me on this issue. So I want to say thank you. And I also want to thank Adrian Adams for having those long hearings that were really great and informative. So to Adrian, thank you. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Permission to explain? Permission granted. All right. I have some concerns with uh, Councilmember Brannon's Christmas tree lighting bill, but I've decided I'm going to go with it anyway. <laughs> um, when I joined the formerly incarcerated leaders and organizers from Just Leadership on the steps of this building four years ago in 2015, as they launched the campaign to close Rikers, I do not think I would have believed that four years later we would get to sit in the chambers and vote to do it. Organizing matters. I hope everybody who believes in it on all sides will keep doing it. I vote aye on all. Levin. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I uh, also want to acknowledge um, several people that um, I did not before. I'd like to acknowledge uh, Miss V, Victoria Phillips, uh, who was um, so excellent at our hearings and uh, provided a, a live update in, on a, on a um, message board that, was, that allowed us to uh, see her, her thoughts in real time and, and opinions in real time, and we appreciate that. Um, I'd also like to thank my staff uh, who worked all, tirelessly on this for a number, many, many months. Uh, Glamani Bravo Lopez, Deidre Cheatham, uh, uh, Jonathan Boucher, Nicole Hunt, uh, Ben Solitaire, Betty Lester, um, and Elizabeth Adams, my legislative director who did a tremendous amount of work um, on this. Um, and I would also like to acknowledge uh, Chair Adrian Adams um, for um, providing such an even handed um, uh, uh, leadership 
uh, as chair during this process in the hearing and, uh, and beyond and for, for, um, and for reminding us why we're, we're here doing this and with uh, a moral clarity that, that rings like a bell, uh, I wanna thank her. And with that, I vote aye on all, thank you. Thank you. Levine. Thank you, permission to briefly explain my vote, Madam Majority Leader? Permission granted. Please close out. You can clear the balcony. We are now going to exit the balcony. You're going to clear the balcony? Sergeant at Arms, please clear out the balcony. <laughs> Is it me? It's me, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Levine, Levine's like, it's like a trigger word, the name Levine. It's like a trigger word. <laughs> We are sorry for the inconvenience, but we cannot, we cannot tolerate things being thrown from the balcony. It compromises the security and the safety of every individual here, and we have to all see that. Throwing things over the balcony compromises the safety of every member in this body. We understand that others were not participating, but we cannot tolerate things being thrown over the balcony. It's inexcusable, it's dangerous, it's unfair, it is inappropriate. I apologize to those of you who are here to witness this particular vote, but we cannot compromise the safety of this body. Thank you. Thank you for your participation. When items are thrown over the balcony, you've created an unsafe environment. Thank you for your participation. We appreciate you being here. We apologize that you have to leave because of the actions of others.
Thank you. Thank you. We are now going to continue with the vote. We left off with Council Member Steve Levin. We, met, we left off with Council Member Mark Levine. Thank you. It's a common mistake. Quiet in the chamber. Uh, I, I, I'm disappointed that no one wanted to hear me explain my vote. Uh, I, I simply wanted to express my profound gratitude and admiration for Councilmember Diana Ayala, Councilmember Karen Kozlowitz, Councilmember Margaret Chen, Councilmember Steve Levin, for Speaker Corey Johnson, for former Council Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito. Thank you for your leadership, for being thoughtful and compassionate and principled. Because of you, we are undertaking what is without a doubt the most important and certainly the largest decarceration project in America today, which will not only transform criminal justice in the five boroughs of New York City, it will set an example that will reverberate nationally and beyond. Thank you to everyone in this body, past and present. Thank you to all the advocates and leaders throughout this city who made this possible. I proudly vote aye on all. Thank you. Lewis. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. First, I would like to thank Speaker Johnson for your leadership throughout this process and for taking the time to speak with me. I have a lot of respect for Council Members Kozlovich, Chen, Levin, and Ayala. Through this process, you were very strong, so I respect you all for your decision and for the process that um, you allowed to take place. I also want to thank my colleagues, council members Amprey Samuels, Barron, Espinel, and Yeager for taking the time to meet with me, speak with me, and help me understand the process. I hope some of you remember that I'm a new member <laughs> and a woman of color who represents a district that has been disproportionately affected by mass incarceration of black and brown people. I can say certainly that closing Rikers, Rikers is crucially um, something that we need to do, but building borough-based jails will not remedy our already broken criminal justice system. We continually sp continuously speak about the effects of a criminal justice system designed to punish people who look like me, who are my neighbors, family, friends, constituents, but the process we, but this process, I believe, uh, will not solve or change the problem, but it will move the problem. I am not comfortable with rebuilding new jails while we have yet to address the issues on the ground in communities that let the cycle continue to perpetuate. In addition, I am not comfortable with the fact that my colleagues in central Brooklyn were left out of the conversation that will dictate the futures of our constituents. Rikers is definitely a dark stain on the city and it needs to be closed, but the process needs more oversight. While member, member deference is very important, uh, we weren't considered in the process, but I believe this is an opportunity to add black and brown council members in the conversations and the ongoing process to ensure that we end the pipeline destroying our communities. My hope is that with the millions of dollars that's being put into community investments, that the administration will earmark funds for communities like East Flatbush by providing more schools, a rural recreation center, and a substantive restorative justice plan created to protect officers like my brother who was stabbed over four times at Rikers. A real treatment plan and a strategy to deal with inmates deal that have mental health issues and a real workforce place center in neighborhoods like Flatbush. This was a very hard vote for me. 
Uh, my district is split because of this vote, and I need you all to understand that this was very hard for me, but I vote aye on this particular topic and hope to continue to work with you all through this process. Thank you. Thank you. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, I know we've been focused on a few of the land use items. I want to point you to the Sunset Park South Historic Districts. There are four districts in front of you. Uh, you may not notice this, but it's incredibly uncommon, rare, in fact, first time ever that the agency, the historic, um, land, the Landmarks Preservation Commission is allowing for four districts to move forward at the same time. Uh, and that's a tribute to the incredible work that Sunset Park is doing. I want, I want you to point, I want to point you to Sunset Park and the work that we're doing every day. We are a community that's going through massive gentrification pressures and our communities are incredibly diverse, yet we come together and we talk in dialogue with respect about the things that are important to us in our neighborhood. And these four applications resemble that kind of power. And so with that, I wanna lift up the courage of Sunset Park to continue to push me to join in their work and also lift up the courage that we're having here today with the honest discussions around closing Rikers and the borough-based jail system. The courage that is gonna be required after this vote is to remain unified, and I hope that we can do that as a body. I will be voting no on the borough-based jail system, so you can jot me down no on that part, um, but I also want to say a few words to Judge Lippman and uh, former speaker Melissa Mark Viverito, because I remember those early conversations and we were talking about closing Rikers, and that's what I wanna do, and I know that's what we're gonna do, but today, and this is my conversations that I was, I was having last night with Councilmember Reynoso and Torres. We spent a lot of time on the phone last night and how beautiful it is that we're talking not about closing Rikers, we're talking about how. And that is a revolutionary step and I can't wait to take more revolutionary steps with you. I vote aye on the rest. Thank you. Miller. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. So it's been a, a, a lot of a conversation about describing the inhumanities, whether it's Rikers Island, uh, inmates, and as well as the uh, Department of Corrections staff, and particularly correction officers that are often forced to spend double and triple tours on, on Rikers Island. Over the past two years, we've, it's been a lot of conversation and consultation uh, about those inhumanities that got us all to the point that understand that Rikers Island is a blight that has to be eliminated and, and closed. But understand that closing Rikers Island for, for, for many of us, for, for those of us who live and suffer those scourges that represent communities that have been disproportionately impacted, that have, um, that the closing of Rikers Island is simply the lowest bar when it comes to criminal justice reform. It is the low hanging fruit that does not address many of the issues that have perpetuated the incarceration that we have seen. But as my colleagues have said and demonstrated today that there's been a lot of consultation, there's been a lot of leadership um, around this issue and it's got us to the point that we have spoken that we've talked, that we've talked about services, we've talked about policy, we've talked about programming that addresses those issues. H has it gotten us completely there? We are on, so we are certainly on our way. But I would like to add my commitment to continue to work with Karen, Margaret, Steve, and Diana, as well as the speaker, to continue to fulfill our collective goals of not just uh, closing Rikers Island, but eliminating the mass incarceration that we have seen. And part of that conversation has to be a real conversation about a system that has historically perpetuated um, disproportionate incarceration of black and brown folks. A court system is jurist and all the things that are happening. 
I'm looking forward to thank you, uh, Council Member. Excuse me. I'm looking forward to the implementation implementation of the laws that have been passed in Albany over the past session, putting those to work, but more importantly, working with my colleagues here to make sure that we make real change um, when it comes to criminal justice reform. With that, I'll be voting aye. Thank, thank you. you. Moya. I would aye. Perkins. Uh, thank you. In tribute to the Central Park Five, I vote, I vote aye on all. Thank you for your vote. Powers, I vote aye on all. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. Every single person, every single person in jail represents a failure by our society, a failure to provide opportunity, a failure to provide health care, a failure to support those who need it most. And there is no greater representation of that failure than Rikers Island. Rikers is a torture chamber where detainees are subject to inhumane treatment, permanently traumatizing some of our most vulnerable citizens. Our current ju justice system is more reflective, reflective of an ancient eye-to-eye -eye philosophy predicated on revenge rather than rehabilitation. The system reflects our most base desires for ret retribution rather than a higher ideal of pursuing positive outcomes for tragic events. Our history is of the, uh, uh, the history of this system can be directly traced to our country's original sin, slavery, and is a direct manifestation of white supremacy and the subjugation of black and brown people. We must do better, and closing Rikers once and for all is something that we must do today. I do want to say in Spanish for my Spanish language media as well, en este momento sabemos que en la cárcel uh, hay una injusticia. No dice que nosotros no podemos buscar inversiones para las familias que están en Aicha, que están en la escuela y también buscar justicia para nuestro, nuestra gente que están en la cárcel. Yo me paro aquí hoy apoyando el trabajo que han hecho estos concejales para asegurar que el futuro debajo de hikers no exista y un futuro debajo de cárcel más, más humana sí existe. Por eso que estoy votando hoy yo uh, en favor de cerrando uh, Rikers Island. And I just want to give a big thank you to Melissa Margarito um, for the work that she did in her time as speaker in making sure that she championed an issue that everyone thought we were absolutely out of our minds for pushing. And now we're here actually doing it because of her leadership and her strength. So I want to thank you for that. And thank you to everyone um, who voted in favor and not. And we will be working to do better. And thank you, uh, Speaker Corey Johnson. And how do you vote? I don't know. Thank you. Richard. Uh, quickly, uh, permission to explain my vote. Uh, last summer or the summer before I had the opportunity to visit Rikers and to really speak to many of those young men and women uh, who were being detained there. And one of the things I heard overwhelmingly, I thought we were going to hear complaints overwhelmingly about food, but the complaint was for the need for a better law library, the need for more vocational training, the need for more job opportunities when they got out. And I just want to lift them up because I really left the island a lot more inspired um, by those young people who the world has literally turned their back on backs on. So uh, with that, I want to vote aye for those young people I met there. Thank you. Rivera. Just want to thank my colleagues uh, for leading this thoughtful discussion on criminal justice reforms and for realizing and committing to continuing a focused conversation beyond today's vote. Our work is far, far from over. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Rodriguez. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Uh, thank you again, Speaker Major de Blasio, uh, Jason, Emma, the two chief of staff of the council, and the mayor and the four colleagues, Steve, Margaret, Ayala, and Karen, and the advocate. Uh, as I said before, this plan is only a beginning. This is not the end. I believe that we should end, as we have Vision Zero with a big goal, we should aim to be the city of New York without one person being in the detention center. That will happen and we create a good paid job and we invest in the same quality education to every single child in New York City. That will happen when we respect each other. That's what happens when we end the racism and discrimination. But until we get there, we need to be uh, to put together the best plan to give dignity of anyone that we send to the detention center. I call for the city of New York also to start exploring to establish a reparation to the population of New Yorkers who have spent time in Rikers Island 
in an institution full of corruption, violence, human rights abuse, where the lives of minors were destroyed. Con esto estamos votando, asegurándonos de que nosotros esto estamos comenzando. El objetivo debe ser nosotros construir una ciudad donde nosotros acabemos por siempre con las condiciones de pobreza que vivimos. I can tell you that for me it was not an easy one. At, at the end to yes voted for the plan as a whole because I don't believe in a society where we should have jail. However, I do trust the speaker, I do trust Jason, Amen de Blasio and my colleague when it comes to you know putting together a plan or reinvesting in our community. Every year we've been investing more $150 million to the private sector to create jobs. But those jobs are only in the Midtown area. Those jobs are in Brooklyn, the Long Island City. If we want to attack poverty and violence, we need to invest the same amount of money for any private sector that create good paid jobs and to invest to provide the same quality education to everyone. With that, I vote aye. Thank you. Rose. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I want to congratulate Speaker uh, Melissa Mark Viverito. Um, when she first discussed this, um, many people said that it wasn't possible. So I want to congratulate her for her insight and foresight. I want to thank my colleagues and Speaker Johnson for their grace and courage mm -hmm. um, many times under fire for shepherding this groundbreaking and historic legislation that will truly change the traje tra trajectory of the criminal justice system for all black and brown people. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Rosenthal. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. I wholeheartedly join with my colleagues in fulfilling our moral duty to approve this historic plan to shut down the deadly, abusive, decrepit Rikers jails forever. This is one of the most important votes I will make as a member of this body, and I truly thank the leadership of our colleagues, Melissa Mark Viverito, Corey Johnson, Karen Kozlowitz, Margaret Chin, Diana Ayala, and Steve Levin, your fierce negotiations uh, set us on the trail uh, to closing Rikers successfully. But we're not just closing Rikers, we're reducing the number of city jails from 12 to four. We're creating humane facilities that will bring detainees closer to their families and critical resources. As chair of the Committee on Women and Gender Equity, there is one commitment I am especially proud of. The administration's pledge that if an appropriate and more centrally located site becomes available, they will work with advocates and the council to assess its feasibility for use as a woman's jail in lieu of the current plan to house women in a space adjoining the men's Queens facility. I will work closely with Close Rosies, the Women's Community Justice Association, and other advocates to seize this historic opportunity and lay the groundwork for a standalone community justice facility for women, trans, and gender nonconforming New Yorkers. Today, the vast majority, 85% of females held on Rikers are mothers. As the number of incarcerated women continues to drop, we need a facility with sufficient space for much needed programming, mental health therapy, substance abuse counsel counseling, medical personnel, and most importantly, space for children and other family members. If I may just wrap up. Thank you. We need a facility that fully integrates a trauma-informed guiding philosophy to help women build support networks and break the cycle of incarceration and recidivism. A facility that supports recovery, rehabilitation, and family reunification. A facility that enables incarcerated women to move forward with their lives. Today we are taking a profoundly important step toward that vision. I proudly, I proudly vote aye on all. Thank you. Salamanca. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you. While there should be no debate on the closure of Rikers, the course that the administration has taken to get there has lacked the critical feedback 
of community stakeholders in the Bronx. Whereas the city followed the recommendations of the Littman Commission to build borough-based jails at locations of existing detention centers near county courthouses in three of the four boroughs, the administration cited a location that is more than two and a half miles away from the Bronx courthouse. The response from the community and elected officials alike was immediate in their opposition to the location. Nevertheless, the administration moved forward with their plans, leaving many in the South Bronx wondering if a commitment to the meaningful community engagement was a convenient bullet point on a presentation. Additionally, the community's dissatisfaction with the new borough-based plan extends to the broken promises of previous administrations to keep the Vernon C. Bain Correctional Center, otherwise known as the Barge, operating. Asking our community to accept a brand new jail without closing the barge first is wholly unacceptable and disingenuous to Bronxites. I have given the administration numerous opportunities on public hearings to address this concern relating to the barge, but I have been vastly disappointed each time at not even hearing most preliminary estimate timelines to sinking the boat. Even without citing the other issues that have originated from the council hearings over the last two months, I cannot vote in favor of certain actions on the, this land use application in its current form. The administration cannot simply ignore the valid concerns of the community and expect us to accept this decision. I implore the mayor to continue exploring all siding options near the Bronx County Courthouse where this jail belongs once and for all, and for once and for all, sink the barge. And for that reason, I will be voting no on LUs 518 and 519, and I on all. Thank you. Thank you. Torres. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. In the 1990s, there were well over 20,000 people on Rikers Island. By 2026, the number will fall to 3,300. The closing of Rikers Island combined with a more than 600 percent plunge in the New York City jail population represents one of the most extraordinary strides toward decarceration ever to be undertaken by any city in the United States. What would have been unthinkable only a few, week, a few years ago is about to become the law of New York City. The plan before us has four core elements. First, it would close Rikers Island. Second, it would reduce the jail population to historic lows and in doing so end the era of mass incarceration. Third, it would reduce the overall number of jails in New York City. The city will ultimately have fewer jails, not more. And fourth, it would replace old jails whose conditions of confinement have become unlawfully unsafe and inhumane, a fact the opposition overlooks. My council district was home to Khalif Browder. Accused but never convicted of a crime, Khalif languished for three years in Rikers Island, where he was psychologically tortured by solitary confinement and physically brutalized by violence at the hands of fellow inmates and correction officers. The trauma of his confinement was so profound that he ultimately took his own life. Even when Khalif left Rikers Island, Rikers Island never left him. Communities of color continue to bear the scars of mass incarceration. One cannot separate the ends from the means. One cannot separate closing Rikers Island from the very plan that would enable the closing of Rikers Island. The underlying question on which the City Council is voting is whether to close Rikers Island. And whatever the nuances of your own beliefs about criminal justice reform. The vote before us presents a simple, stark choice. We can either vote to keep Rikers open indefinitely in pursuit of a perfect plan, or we can vote to close Rikers once and for all. I choose to close Rikers Island. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I vote aye. Thank you. Traeger. Permission to expand my vote? Permission granted. Yeah, I've waited a long time. <laughs> Number one, there is a funded plan for air conditioning in all New York City schools because of this New York City Council. Thank you. And, and for anyone to reference NYCHA or schools, I question how many doors you've knocked on to help elect a Senate Democratic majority up in Albany. I know the Speaker has, 
The former speaker has as well. Many of the ills we face in this city is based on the disinvestment from Albany and Washington. So let's, number one, get that straight. Now let me get to my comments. I, like many of my colleagues, feel keenly the historical weight of the actions which are before us today. Under the leadership of Speaker Viverito, following the persistent advocacy of groups like Just Leadership and the Close Rikers and Beyond Rosie's Coalition, many of us committed to the moral urgency of closing Rikers Island, which is plagued by violence, brutality, isolates incarcerated people from their families and communities, and keeps the conditions and impacts of incarceration outside of the public consciousness and our collective conscience. I will be voting yes today because, simply put, I feel that this vote is necessary to close Rikers. Many families in my district have suffered from the impacts of mass incarceration and a justice system which too often criminalizes poverty. Parts of my district, particularly Coney Island, have been irrevoc irre irrevocably harmed time and time again by policies crafted with abject disregard for communities of color, redlining, autocratic urban renewal plans, disinvestment in affordable and public housing, and inequitable resourcing of public schools, among many others. I fully understand why people directly uh, impacted by incarceration would question the ability of government to make meaningful progress when the history of our communities has, was littered with broken promises. Make no mistake, this plan, even with nearly a half a billion dollars in added investments through the points of agreement, is not sufficient to fully achieve justice for communities impacted by mass incarceration. If I could have one more minute. However, for me, to vote no would give credence to the prevailing sentiment from just a few years ago that closing Rikers was overly idealistic and impossible. There will be not another opportunity to vote to close Rikers in the near future. I do not have confidence that there is the political and bureaucratic will to close Rikers outside of this vote. This is the day of decision. We have the opportunity to reaffirm the commitment to the moral obligation to close Rikers and continue the historic arc of the criminal justice reform work on the city and state level. Thank you. And I'll just close, I have more, but I'll just close by saying it is no coincidence that one of the most compassionate and consequential justice reform bills in this council to close Rikers was led by three powerful and extraordinary women, plus Steve Levin. <laughs> Karen, Diana, Margaret, Steve, you're all extraordinary. I vote aye. Thank you. Valone. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Well, no one will ever say we're not a passionate body of city council members. Uh, and thank you for letting us have our time today, Madam Majority Leader. I rise as someone who actually served on the Board of Corrections for years and spent much time on Rikers Island with our board members, with these council members, watching Danny Drum go through the halls with Corey and fighting for change and seeing the sadness that permeated Rikers Island. Uh, sadness from everyone, sadness from the corrections officers, from the detainees, the family members, those who suffered and languished on that island. No one here is advocating at all to keep Rikers Island open. The status quo must end. It is on our backs to decide how to reform that system. And there's two very keen proposals that we were looking at, reinvesting and destroying and rebuilding Rikers Island or community facilities. And while we struggled with that, I just wanted to add to our members today, while we talk about the reforms that are needed, there are many voices that come to us in many different forms. And there's also the voices of the mother that buries a child, and a family member that suffered a murder, and those who have had violent felonies committed against them, and they come to us and say, am I safe? Those who commit those crimes must be incarcerated in a correctional facility that can handle them and protect others that shouldn't be there. That is also on our table today, today. And I say, please don't forget those voices while we build that facility for the future. So the argument for me is always been, sorry, always been to keep Rikers Island. But with today's vote to rezone and the resolution to change that, we no longer have that option. And I commend Karen Kozowitz and the delegation yeah. chair for her leadership to find a viable option close to that. the court system. And it's hard to argue against a facility close to, a, to that system. So that's my, my dilemma today and my argument, and I thank you all for tr trying to get me to that place. Um, 
I vote aye on everything except for pre-considered resolution 1091 and vote yes on all other items. Thank you, Madam Majority. Thank you. Van Bramer. I vote no on Len Use 513 through 526 and accompanying resolutions 1118 through 1130 and I on all others. Jaeger. Thank you. I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 1762, resolution 1091 and land use 513 through 516, 518 through 526 and the accompanying resolutions. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Matteo. I vote no on land use 513, 516, 518, 526 with all the accompanying resolutions, pre-considered resolution 1091. I also vote no and no on 759 and 762. I and the rest. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. Today has been a historic and important day here at the New York City Council, and I am grateful for all of the members who spoke up. It was an intense day of mm -hmm. people figuring out the best way forward with their own conscience. And I am proud of this body. I am proud of Speaker Mark Viverito getting us to this point and turning the reins over to all of us who got to continue here after 2017. I think today is a day when Rikers Island is demolished. Today is a day that the history books will look back on as a good day for the future of New York City, as getting rid of a profound and painful symbol of inhumanity and brutality that was allowed to fester and be in the East River for far too long. So today is not the end of the journey. Today is a good step in something concrete to move this city forward. We still must push for additional funds on combating homelessness and interrupting violence and getting people the services that they need in communities all across the city. But again, let's make no mistake about this. This is a step forward. This is progress. This is the right thing to do. And so I am grateful. I want to just end by again singling out a few people who I mentioned before. The staff here at the City Council has been working around the clock, and I am exceedingly grateful to Jason Goldman, Lillian Pascone, Jennifer Firmino, Raju Mann, Brian Crow, Alana Sivan, Isha Wright, Latanya McKinney, uh, Regina Pareda Ryan, uh, and excuse me, and George Sarkissian. And I want to make sure that I don't uh, forget anyone because these folks have been working. I want to thank Peter Butler as well. All of them have worked so, so, so hard in getting us here today. And I think this is a day that we will look back on as a great day for the future of New York City. And the City Council did something very, very good today. So I proudly, proudly, proudly vote aye on this plan. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson, for your leadership. We'll now have introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to as committees indicated on today's agenda. Just need 30 seconds. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote. Quiet in the chamber. A, a, a 49 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of intro 1759A, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, four negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 1762A, which was adopted by a vote of 44 affirmative, five negative, and zero abstentions. Rezo 1091, which was adopted by a vote of 40 in the affirmative, nine negative, and zero abstentions. Intro 1742A, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, three negative, zero abstentions. 
and LUs 513 through 516 with accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 36 in the affirmative, 13 negative, and zero abstentions. LUs 518 and 519 with accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 35 affirmative, 14 negative, and zero abstentions. LUs 520 through 526 with accompanying resos, which was adopted by a vote of 36 in the affirmative, 13 negative, and zero abstentions. The revised land use call up vote is 48 in the affirmative and one negative. Councilmember Levin waves his time to speak. He thanked enough people, and I'm thanking everyone on his behalf. The sti uh, Madam Majority Leader? Yes. Are we ready to adjourn? Give me one moment. Okay. We will now have introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committee as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. There are no resolutions on today's agenda, so we will now move into general discussion. Seeing that there are no members that are listed on the general discussion, we will now have Speaker Corey Johnson the to seated, close today's meeting. The, Madam Majority Leader, you did an outstanding job today, and I'm really Thank grateful you. for you chairing this meeting. Thank you. You did a wonderful job. I'm proud Thank of your you. leadership. The stated meeting of October 17th, 2019 is hereby adjourned. <laughs>